afternoon. The meeting will now come to order. Hello, I'm Marsha Herbert, President of the Board of Education. I would like to welcome you to the June 14th, 2023 board meeting. In keeping with the board's commitment to open communication with the community, this meeting is being streamed live on CCPS website at www.carolk12.org and broadcast live on channel 21. We are also recording this meeting so it can be accessed on demand on our website and broadcast throughout the month on channel 21. Public participation will be held at approximately 515. Speakers will be directed into the board room from the building lobby and are allotted three minutes to address the board. As a reminder, please silence all cell phones and other devices. Board members, please turn off your microphones when you're not speaking. And we are going to go back into closed after our public meeting for to obtain legal counsel and to conduct collective bargaining. So I didn't have to tell all that right there, but I did. So please stand for the Pledge of Allegiance. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. All right, we need a motion for the approval of the agenda. So moved. So moved by Ms. Battaglia, seconded by Dr. Dorsey. Any corrections? Uh, I mean, we are, not, we are, I already gave my change. Anything else? I call for the vote. All those in favor signify by saying aye. 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 Opposed? It passes unanimously. Now I need a motion for the approval of the minutes for the unapproved board meeting minutes on May 10th. 2023. So moved. By Ms. Battaglia, seconded by Mr. Whistler. Comments, corrections? Seeing none, I call for the vote. All those in favor, signify by saying aye. 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 Opposed? It passes unanimously. Now I need a motion for the unimproved EFMP work session meetings minutes on May 31st, 2023. So moved. It's by Dr. Dorsey and seconded by I'll second Ms. Battaglia. Comments, corrections? Seeing none, I call for the vote. All those in favor signify by saying aye. 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 Opposed? It passes unanimously. At this time, I would ask for the Carroll County Student Government Report. Welcome. <laughs> <laughs> Hello everyone, I hope you're all having a lovely day. My name is Flamatu Fofana, I'm a rising senior at Liberty High School and your new CCSJ president for the 2023 to 2024 school year. I look forward to getting to know all of you through these reports, hopefully other events and vice versa. Um, although our new executive board and staff have not met yet, we're already trying to hit the ground running, revitalizing CCSJ and focusing on teaching students how to advocate for themselves. Our executive board consists of A.J. Sebian, our vice president from Westminster, and Yes Lewinsky, our secretary from Century, and Audrey Ong, our second vice president from Sykesville Middle. As you can see, we have a slightly regionally divorced board this year, which I am very happy about, and similarly, we've tried to have our staff reflect that same way. Our officers are already preparing for the new school year by getting to know each other through a bonding with Mission Escape Room Fun. And we have some other events in the works, such as our CCSJ Advance, which takes place sometime in late summer. And we highly encourage students from all high schools and middle schools to attend. In years past, CCSJ has been focused more so on benefiting those inside of it than outside. And for our students to become better advocates, we have to give all students the chance and opportunities to come to our events and learn new information. We hope to have increased representation from our underrepresented schools at our GAs and hopefully do more school visits with our um, soon-to-be sworn in Shrav, Sahitya Sadakar, which I'm so proud of to help increase our involvement. 
Finally, I will be attending MASC's Advanced and Executive Board meeting in Montgomery County on August 1st and 2nd. And if you have any students interested in getting involved in leadership roles, please consider signing them up on the MD SUCO page, um, as we'd like to be as transparent as possible and provide as many opportunities to our students as we can. Thank you so much for your time, and have a great rest of your evening. Thank you very much. At this time, we will have the seating of the 48th student representative to the board. And I would like for all, everyone to go down in front of the dais, please. I have been practicing. <laughs> Welcome. And now I would like to ask board members to join me in front of the dais for the seating of our new student rep. It is with great pleasure that we, the members of the Board of Education, seat Sahithya Sudakar as the 48th student representative of the Board of Education. Sahithya is a rising junior at Liberty High School. The board is pleased to have her as a representative an advocate of students' issues and student experience within Carroll County Public Schools. We also welcome Sahithya's family, and we would like for her father to stand up, Sudakar Krishnaswani. Was that okay? Okay, I was close. And mother, Sri Vija Sudakar. Sahithya, please come and join us, and congratulations. You may go over and and at this time we will move on to student recognition with Mr. Shockney. Good evening, board members. I have two groups of students that I'm very pleased and honored to present to you this evening. Um, students, when we call your name, we'll ask that you come forward. And parents and family members in the audience, we ask for you to stand to be recognized at the same time. The first group of students that I'd have the pleasure of recognizing are students who participated in the Maryland Skills USA competition. 49 students from the Carroll County Career and Technology Center competed at this year's Skills USA state competition, with 25 of those students meddling in their event. Together, these students brought home four gold, three silver, and nine bronze medals in a variety of individual and team events. The gold medal winners automatically qualify for the Skills USA Nationals to be held in Atlanta during the week of June 19th. So I'll start to, I'll begin to call of our students. Our first student is Michael Angel, welding fabrication, bronze medal, parents Albert and Teresa Angel. Our next student, Leah Marshall, Advertising Design Gold Medal. Parents, Melinda Deal and Scott Marshall. <laughs> next, Lainey Miller, Digital Cinema Production Silver Medal. Parents, Jeffrey and Rebecca Miller. Next student, Tyler Simpkins, welding fabrication, bronze medal. Parents, Keith and Tara Simpkins. <laughs> Our 
Next we have Katrina Thompson, welding sculpture, bronze medal. Parents, Thomas and Shannon Thompson. Our next student is Nicholas Vu, Digital Cinema Production, Gold Medal, Parents Anthony and Nuyet Vu. The next group of students I'd like to recognize are our Carson Scholars. Each year, the Carson Scholars Fund recognizes a select group of high achieving students in grades four through 11 who demonstrate outstanding academic achievement, at least a 3.75 GPA and humanitarian qualities. This year, 36 students from Carroll County received the coveted honor of being named a Carson Scholar and were awarded a $1,000 scholarship. From Carrolltown Elementary School, Alexa Highstand, Parents, Michael and Jessica Highstand. <laughs> From Cranberry Station Elementary, Ava Chachio, Parents, Vito and Stacy Chachio. <laughs> From Ebb Valley Elementary, Emma Click, parents Randy and Audrey Click. From Eldersburg Elementary, Gavin Andrews. Parents, Kenneth and Kristen Andrews. From Elmer A. Wolf Elementary, Emma Reifsnyder. Parents, Clinton and Laura Reifsnyder. From Freedom Elementary, Mukesh Suresh Babu, parents Suresh Babu Manavajajan, and Anur Hatha Subamanian. From, free, uh, from Friendship Valley Elementary, Ian Groves, parents Michael and Helene Groves. From Linton Springs Elementary, Grace Greenalch, parents Robert and Shannon Greenalch. <laughs> From
from Manchester Elementary, Noah Bresnicki, parents James and Shelley Brez Brezicki. From Mechanicsville Elementary, Savannah Enzer, parents Joshua and Hillary Enzer. <laughs> From Runnymede Elementary, Rebecca Johnson, parents Michael and Sandra Johnson. From Spring Garden Elementary, Sofia Ordonez, parents Alvaro and Katie Ordonez. <laughs> From Tawnytown Elementary, Colton Nelson, parents Joseph and Nicole Nelson. From William Winchester Elementary, Eric Champney, parents Dennis and Dana Champney. From Winfield Elementary, Kaylin Reed, parents Stephen and Amy Reed. From Northwest Middle, Evan Rippian, parents Robert and Yvette Rippian. From Sykesville Middle, Rachel Carpenter, parents David and Heather Carpenter. <laughs> From West Middle, Lily Burke, parent Michelle Burke. From Century High, Jill Viramgama, parents Vijay and Shanabin Viramgama. From Francis Scott Key High School, Aaliyah Andrew, parent Carrie Cigar. <laughs> From
From South Carroll High School, Madeline Benfer, parents Gregory and Amy Benfer. From Westminster High, Derek Day, parents Douglas and Christine Day. And from Winters Mill High School, Amanda Nell, parents Matthew and Barbara Nell. Very importantly, have I missed anyone in the audience? Students, thank you so much. Families, thank you so much for your ongoing support and guidance and for sharing your children with us. Thank you. We'll just wait a couple moments um, for those that are leaving then before we start our regular business again. Again, thank you, everyone. All right, um, we have employee recognition, but we had given all those out and there's no additional ones. And there was no one signed up for public comment. So we will move on to employee groups. Welcome. Thank you. Hello, Superintendent McCabe, board members and commissioner. 
I am not Celeste Jordan. I am Josh Davidson, the vice president of CCEA, substituting for Celeste. I can tell you that my needlework skills are not on par with hers. Actually, they're non-existent. But let me give the report as best I can, and hopefully I do it justice. So this past Friday was the last day of the 2022-2023 school year. Woohoo! We hope all the students of Carroll County Public Schools had a successful year of learning. We hope all the educators of Carroll County Public Schools had a fulfilling year as well. There are 88 days between, not that we're counting, between June 9th and September 5th. What do you do with all those days? CCEA suggests reading. Parents, please read to your children each day for 10 to 15 minutes. The benefits of reading to children are improved language skills, development of imagination and creativity, increased concentration, cognitive development, and improved parent and child relationships. Let your child read to you. Make sure your child sees you reading for pleasure. They will model your example. Summer reading helps children tackle summer learning loss. Make time for a trip to the Carroll County Public Library. They can help your child find reading materials of interest to them. Carroll County Public Library has more than traditional books for loan, and they have a variety of programs. If you are planning a vacation this summer, check out materials to, related to where you are planning a vacation. Like read Misty of Chincoteague. I don't think anyone ever reads that anymore. Bring it back. Before you head to the wild ponies of Assateague. Think back to what your favorite book was and read it with your child. Personally, my favorite was Wayside School is Falling Down. Another one that needs to make a comeback. Imagine the effect on your child if they read for at least 15 minutes for those 88 days. Books allow readers to see characters who are like them and characters who are different from them. Books reflect the environment around us and allow us to visit places around the world. Books can transport us through time and space without ever leaving our chair. CCEA wishes students and educators a safe, healthy summer. To the graduates of CCPS, please be safe and have a happy, successful life. Remember the words of Pele, success is no accident. It is hard work, perseverance, learning, studying, sacrifice, and most of all, love of what you are doing or learning to do. Board of Ed members, don't worry, Celeste will be back in January. <laughs> Thank oh, you. And July. That's okay. <laughs> All right, do we have any other employee groups this evening? All right, now we are going to move on to board member activities and correspondence, and we are going to go to my left, and we are going to have Ms. Sudakar start out tonight. And you can say if you have any comments about your new position. Welcome. Hello, everyone. Oh, I gotta press the button. Hello, everyone, and hello to you, the Board of Education. You don't have to hold on to it. Is oh. it is it red now? Is yes, it still it red? Is. You're good All to right. go. When you're Already finished, started. hit it again. <laughs> All right. <laughs> hello, everyone, and hello to the Board of Education and its members. It's an incredible honor to be sitting here with you all today, and I just it's just such an amazing thing to see how many students have reached out to me over the course of this year and how many students have reached out to CCSGA. This role has become increasingly important for the role of student voice, and I cannot wait to speak and represent the students of Carroll County. Thank you, and welcome. And do you have anything else? I do have my board report. Very good. <laughs> This month, I had the honor to sing at Liberty High School's graduation with the Vocal Honors Ensemble, and I would like to give many congratulations to all the seniors who walked across the stage, receiving their diplomas and heading off towards their futures, whatever that may be. Congratulations to the class of 2023. I had also attended the last CCSGA Executive Board meeting on June 2nd, where we passed out superlatives and discussed the ways we have improved and will continue to improve for CCSGA. We have also chosen the 2023-2024 CCSGA staff members. Our board cannot wait to plan and execute many ideas we have for the next year. And along with that, I would like to remind all students, even those spending their summers knee deep in college applications and maybe having a job, to please take some time to relax and enjoy your summer breaks. Thank you. Thank you very much. Ms. Savigny. Thank you, Ms. Herbert. 
And welcome, Sahithya. So great to have you up here with us. Um, and it was really fun to see you. I know I think I caught you off guard at a track meet a couple of weeks ago. Um, <laughs> I walked up and said, you know, we're very excited about having you join us. And I think you, you, you were just quite surprised by that. <laughs> But it was great to see you out there on the on the track. Great to see you too. <laughs> um, and you know, May and June are just very busy months um, with the school system. So a lot of great stuff going on this month. Um, I did have the pleasure of attending one of the pre-K planning committee meetings. Um, so it was kind of great to see that in action um, with Bill Kane, kind of uh, you know helping teachers and parents and principals try to understand, okay, how do we, how do we plan appropriately for these uh, pre-K and kindergarten additions that we're, that we're looking to build. Um, so that was a great experience. Um, also, uh, we had a walkthrough of the old East Middle School. Uh, Mr. Carver and Mr. Marks did a great job with that. Um, it was great to see so many members of the community out there kind of saying farewell to their, their old school, whether it be the old East Middle School, or whether it be the old Westminster High School, like there were a lot of folks from the community. It was it was great to see everyone out there, kind of in support of this, and everybody was very excited to see the progress being made on the new building. So that was a, a good evening, and uh, you know, of course, graduations. Uh, the the graduation at Gateway. It's always one of my favorites um, because you get to hear so many of the personal stories of the kids um, as they're walking across the stage. So that was it's always a it's always tough to maintain your composure. There were a couple of stories that were very uh, tear evoking, um, but it, it's just a very special night and congratulations to all of those students. Um, and I also got to um, uh, congratulate a lot of the kids and, and be at the, the Westminster High School graduation. So that's kind of a special one for me because my, my kids go there, know a lot of the kids, um, and they did it, yeah, next year's gonna be a real tough one for me um, as my daughter walks the stage. But uh, it was just such, it's so exciting to be at graduations. It's like the culmination of, of so much effort on behalf of the students. So I just wanna congratulate everyone ac across the county, all the students that, that graduated this year. Um, and the last item was um, yesterday, I actually had the privilege of joining the Health Teacher in Service Day. Um, so that's where we were talking about um, the new upcoming, um, the health framework, the, the new indicators um, from both the state and the locally developed curriculum and talking with teachers, uh, the health teachers about healthy relationships and updates to information from the health department, updates, update on new laws that came out of Annapolis um, this past year. So um, just a lot of great updates and, and a lot of great energy from, from the teachers um, at that in-service day. So I appreciate um, Mr. Warnick uh, you know, allowing me to join that group and, and speak in front of them to answer some questions that they had. Um, and that was um, really a great experience. And with that, I'll hand it over to you. Yeah, um, very busy time of year. Um, professionally and personally, it's it's crazy. Um, so I, uh, May 11th, I attended the overdose uh, vigil that was held at St. John's. Um, it is unfortunate that every year the list gets longer of names. Um, so I know with partnerships with the state's attorney's office as well, our sheriff's department and our health department and CCPS, um, you know, we always work to try to bring um, about overdose awareness and drug awareness. On May 17th, I attended the CCPS Wellness Night uh, that was held down in Eldersburg, Sykesville area, and that was uh, pretty well attended there with great uh, conversations. May 23rd, I attended, um, I was a chaperone for a field trip for um, my youngest third grade class to the Farm Museum, and that was really cool because that was always been one of my favorite places when I was growing up. May 23rd and 24th, I attended a career and tech completer ceremonies. The t May 26th, the Transition Academy, which was, again, um, it's another one of those events you attend that um, you do get really emotional because, you know, these kids, you know, they, they try so hard and work so hard and they overcome a lot of obstacles. On May 31st, um, we had a work session here and attended the Gateway graduation ceremony as well. June 1st was the best graduation ceremony at when, uh, Westminster High. Um, the Sp Carroll Springs graduation ceremony at Carroll Community College and the East Middle School walkthrough as well. And that was really cool. Um, 
because I, I got to see a lot of my old middle school teachers and what was interesting was a couple of them came up to me and recognized me and I was like, oh wow, you know who I am, okay, you, know, you remember me. And I was a quiet kid, so that's, um, that was always kind of nice. You were quiet? I was a quiet kid. <laughs> <laughs> I was. I was a little short kid, and then I was quiet. Um, on oh, June, it, it, yes, <laughs> came out of my shell after graduation. It's amazing things that change. Um, June 4th, I participated in my first 5K, uh, and I don't count Disney as part of my 5K. That's, that's fun time, but this was actually like... I worked the 5K, and my daughter had participated in Girls on the Run, so that's why I was her partner, and it was, um, so that was really fun and interesting. She was the one whining. I, my legs hurt, and I said, just, just imagine you're walking to Haunted Mansion. You, you'll be okay. <laughs> it's fine. Just keep going. On June 6th, I attended the Manchester Valley Senior Awards, the Winter's Mill Graduation Ceremony, and back to Manchester Valley for Senior Scholarship Awards. June 7th, they attended the Manchester Valley and Francis Guy Key graduation. June 9th, of course, was the last day of school. Um, I mean, four graduations, other kids' activities. It was, it was a crazy time, very crazy time. And, of course, last day, you know, celebrate with ice cream. And, um, and then I also did FFA banquets. Senator Reedy had a, a wonderful breakfast yesterday, which he went over a lot of the um, wrap-ups from legislation over the year. So coming, you know, busy time, again, like always, pre between preparing for fair, um, I'm also heading to Delaware Valley next week with my daughter to do a student and parent meet and greet, um, continuing my college ed education col cl college classes. So I'm currently on week four of introduction to anthropology and week one of anthropology, health, illness, and healing. And then finally, congratulations to all our seniors. Um, it was interesting because with this being the first, my first kid graduating and being there and witnessing it and, you know, not just as usual handing out the cases, but with her as an individual that was a, one second time I was a mom. I didn't cry. I cried today. <laughs> her, uh, the pictures, we got pictures from the graduations and as soon as I opened them, I lost it. So... And Miss Marsha, you know, you're like, keep it together. Yep. And I did. I kept she, it together. I was her cheerleader. And today is the first day I cried about her graduation. So, yeah, that was interesting. But, yeah, you know, congratulations to all our seniors, and I hope everyone has a safe summer. Thank you. Dr. Dorsey. Thank you. On May 11th, um, well, before I begin that, I, too, would like to welcome our new board member. It's so great to have you join us. And, again, looking forward to you representing the, the students for us. Now, on May 11th, I attended the MABE Conference Program Committee meeting, and during this meeting, we continue to refine plans for our upcoming 2023 MABE Conference. Information has been disseminated to all board members and superintendents, so hopefully my fellow board members have had an opportunity to read through um, the information, and hopefully some of you will be able to, to join us um, this year. Hopefully we can be represented um, at, these, at this year's conference. And again, it's scheduled for October 2nd through 4th at the Westin in Annapolis. So hopefully we can have some takers. On May Doctor, 12th, excuse me, Dr. Dorsey, <laughs> don't fall over. But the two of us have already signed up. Oh, wonderful. <laughs> I just well, wanted to surprise her. Dr. McCabe was there last year, so thank you so much for <laughs> signing up, um, Ms. Marsha. Okay, on May 12th, the Curriculum Council meeting, um, and that was our last meeting um, for this year, and during the meeting we had um, two topics. Um, we received technology updates, and secondly, we also reviewed the instructional materials that are going to be considered um, for beginning next school year. And those materials will be an action item for us later this evening. Also on May 12th, I left the Curriculum Council meeting and made my way to Liberty for the Learning for Independence LFI prom. And again, it was just a wonderful um, opportunity for our students. They had an afternoon of dancing and enjoying food, playing games, socializing, and witnessing the selections um, for the prom court. So I certainly thank um, Principal Gaunt, Mr. Shockney, Mrs. Whittle, our special ed staff, parents, and all who worked on providing this very special opportunity for our students. 
On May 15th, I attended the kindergarten planning committee meeting. Specifications for the upcoming kindergarten additions were discussed, and again, those are going to be coming before us later this evening as well. On May 17th, I attended the partnership banquet dinner at Carroll County Career and Technology Center. The business partners and interns with Career Connections were thanked for their hard work and help. So it was a wonderful evening. We had a great meal. And again, um, we were able to, to give thanks to those business partners and interns who helped us with Career Connections. On May 19th, I participated in the combined meeting with the Equity Council and School Liaisons. Um, we met in regions and engaged in dialogue as liaisons shared their plans for the upcoming year. Plans and goals were based on individual school data, and I certainly thank um, Dr. Moore um, for bringing us all together that morning. On May 24th, Carroll County Career and Technology Center certificate ceremonies, so I attended um, that, and departments receiving certificates were the biomed sciences, criminal justice, building maintenance, print production, video production, and cosmetology. On the 25th of May, it was the Transitions Connections Academy graduation, and has been, as has been said, this certainly um, was a heartwarming celebration. It recognized and celebrated each student's achievements, talents, and unique gifts. On May 31st, we had our board work session on our school facilities master plan, and that evening, the Gateway School graduation, and again, each graduate was fondly recognized by a faculty presenter, um, so that was another beautiful celebration. On June 1st, the best certificate ceremony, and I'm just repeating, it was a wonderful celebration of students and their accomplishments. Later, we had the Carroll Springs graduation, again, a wonderful celebration, this time of a fine young man and his accomplishments. Later that day, we had our Pride Edition meeting, and specifications for the edition were discussed, and again, will be coming before our board later this evening as an action item. I, too, attended on that day the walkthrough of East Middle. Again, a final walkthrough um, of East Middle was provided. I had the opportunity to chat with former and current administrators, teachers, staff, and community members. And in talking with those who had attended the school, I could hear the pride and love for their school and the warm stories and remembrances that they shared. Some were waiting expectantly outside um, of the building. They were waiting for their former classmates so that they could arrive and go through the building one last time together. There were yearbooks on display, and there was even one person who had the very first yearbook that was published um, for the former Westminster High School. I did have a few people ask whether bricks from the school are going to be sold mm -hmm. when the building is taken down, mm -hmm. because they said they'd love to have a mm -hmm. piece of their former high school as a special remembrance. So that might be a thought. <laughs> <laughs> and during the week of June 5th, I attended the high school graduations. Many congratulations and best wishes to the classes of 2023 and to all the parents and or guardians of the students. Thanks also to the administrators, school faculties, and staffs for preparing our students for this major milestone and for planning the beautiful ceremonies and celebrations. So it was a job very well done. And finally, I wish all teachers and staff members a very safe, relaxing summer and happy safe summer also to all of our students and teaching and being in education just gives us an opportunity each year to sort of reset and no matter how positive the year has been or um, maybe no matter how many changes you wish you had have made during the year, we always get an opportunity to start again. Um, so that's pretty unique to our teaching prof profession. So I hope that everyone gets rested and recharged for next year because believe it or not, it'll soon be here. I, I think I heard the number of days that were, sh that were shared, um, but we, we know how quickly time flies. So anyway, hopefully everyone has a great summer. Thanks.
ahead, Mr. Whistler. All right. Um, well, welcome to June and happy Flag Day, everyone. Um, first, welcome to the board. Um, I know you're going to be a wonderful new colleague, and uh, I've been on the job now for seven months, and my only word of advice is just be yourself, um, add to the discussion, because your voice matters. So I, 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 I'm really glad you're on the board with us, so welcome. Um, as far as my schedule, I did attend one PTA meeting this past month uh, at Mechanicsville Elementary on May 25th. Uh, I was so glad to learn that their PTA had a record fundraising year. So again, it's just a testament to our parents and our community. Um, that PTA is so incredibly organized and so focused on helping students and teachers succeed. So I really appreciate their efforts. Uh, on May 31st, I attended the Educational Facilities Master Plan meeting with my colleagues. Uh, I do encourage the public to review that meeting because it gives great insight as to the process we use within Carroll County Public Schools to uh, um, upgrade our facilities, uh, address aging facilities, and uh, I learned a great deal at that meeting, and I really encourage folks to, uh, to, to uh, watch that meeting. I did attend all 15 certificate and graduation ceremonies between May 23rd and June 8th. I think it's really important to remind everyone that our high school seniors lost nearly two years of their traditional high school journey because of COVID. And I just hope folks realize that our students and teachers did so much during such a difficult time to ensure that our young men and women are ready for the world. It's a true testament of our teachers and, and the devotion of our kids and our students to just buckle down and, and make it happen. And so during those 15 ceremonies, these are just several things I heard. Um, and I believe they show tremendous return on what our taxpayers invest in public education. And again, the result of the hard work of so many stakeholders. And uh, Dr. McCabe, feel free to correct me if I'm wrong in any of these, but by my count, I think our students earned about $70 million plus in scholarships, tens of thousands of volunteer service hours by our students in our communities, hundreds of students earning college credit through AP courses, a dozen or so students earning associate's degrees and high school diplomas this year, hundreds more earning career and technical certificates to make a quick, ready to go start in the workplace. Carroll County Schools collected numerous state awards in the academics, fine arts, music, athletics, and the list goes on and on. Um, I'm just incredibly impressed at all of the accomplishments of our students over this last year. And as a retired Naval officer, I was so proud to see a large number of our students plan to enter the armed forces and serve our nation. I'm just so proud of them. And our nation is safe, and it's going to be safe because of them. I can't say that I had a favorite ceremony. However, there was one that stood out for me, um, and it's been mentioned a couple times already. Um, for those who don't know, the Transitions Connections Academy empowers young adults with cognitive disabilities to become self-directed and active participants in our society. These students continue beyond high school and they complete TCA when they typically reach 21. Three years ago, these students couldn't walk across the stage when they graduated high school. And I was amazed, a couple of students left the comfort and ease of their wheelchairs to cross that stage on their own. And I've never seen a greater display of courage and perseverance in my life. They and their classmates finally got the chance to walk across the stage and celebrate the occasion with their family. That ceremony was very moving for me and a reminder of why teachers do what they do and why what we do at headquarters matters so much. So I'll close by saying once again how grateful I am for the incredible efforts of our teachers, support staff, bus drivers. They demonstrate each and every day why we do this and I'm so appreciative for their efforts. All of you make Carroll County one of the very best school systems in our state. So like Dr. Dorsey said, I hope everyone has a relaxing summer. You did so much this year and you certainly deserve it. Thank you. Thank you. Um, at this time, um, I always like to talk about the Career and Tech Center. That's one of my gems that I like to talk about. Um, I would like to share a great example of uh, how our schools are making a difference. Uh, back in 2015, Scott Tobias introduced the Coastal Con Conservation of Maryland to the Career and Tech Center. 
Since then, the masonry program has made hundreds of reef balls. Our elementary schools students have cast and hatched several hundred more. These reef balls are instrumental in revitalizing the oyster population in the Chesapeake Bay and surrounding waters. They also bring in feeder fish that provide hot spots for anglers. And if any of you have seen the pictures that were posted, uh, it was a tractor trailer flatbed load of 120 reef balls and they were deployed in the James Island Reef site near Crisfield. And I also want to give a shout out to one of our partners, Lehigh Cement, for the countless donations of Portland Cement. So we really appreciate that. I've been to partnership dinners, I've been to play days, I've been to farewells, I've been to certificate ceremonies and graduations. But there are two people in this room that I want to recognize tonight. Mr. Duffy and I go a long way, and now he's covering his face. And when I was, in a, when I was a high school phys ed teacher, I did keep the score clock or I kept the books for wrestling for Dick Barreline for years. And I really did become involved with that wrestling family and, of course, Mr. Kyler. And um, I heard through the grapevine that Mr. Duffy was being nominated for the Maryland chapter of the Wrestling Hall of Fame. And I thought, well, I could either do a lot of damage or help him get it. <laughs> and so I said, you need to send me your resume because I don't know all of his history. I know some of his history. And he gave me that. And I will tell you, if anybody wants to see a, an impressive resume, that man has one. Now, I don't know if it's all true or not. But anyway, <laughs> um, I just wanted to let you know that. And I did. I, and I was... I really did want to write him a letter of recommendation. And then um, Mr. Collar called me and he says, well, your guy got in. And so I just wanted to say congratulations. I don't know when you're going to be approved or anointed or whatever you're going to be done. But I also said there must have not been a lot to pick, choose from. But I think that is a big lie because let me tell you something, there were a lot of nominations and they do not get in on their first try. He did. Congratulations, Mr. Duffy. Job well done. You knew I was going to have to get you. You knew that after I did that. And um, this lady here beside me, I need to talk to her, talk about her a little bit. Um, it has been announced, um, uh, and I'd like to make another announcement. It is with great honor for me to share that our superintendent has completed her doctorate of education and now is officially Dr. McCabe. So congratulations, Dr. McCabe. I, uh, two years ago, I looked at her and I said, girl, you know, all know how I am. I said, you got to get that doctorate. And it has paid off, and it's particularly noteworthy, that she was able to accomplish this goal while dealing with COVID and all kind of other challenges and a first year superintendent. On behalf of the board and the school system, congratulations on this well-deserved honor. We are proud of you. And now that you're officially Dr. McCabe, we hope you discover you have a little bit more free time to relax and do the things you enjoy. And I don't know who was hunting for her nameplate today, but I had it hid. And here is Dr. McCabe's new thank <laughs> you. I know. <laughs> so, um, but everybody have uh, teachers get rejuvenated because believe it or not, before you turn around, it, it's going to come. Everybody, be safe. Read. Be safe, and have a wonderful summer. And it'll be here before you know it. All right. Now we will move on to the superintendent's report. Thank you, President Herbert, and you're right, I do look forward to doing something besides writing when I get home at night and, and on the weekends. I'll discover all new hobbies that I left behind a few years ago, that's right. Uh, and welcome to our newest uh, student board member. Um, I hope you have a wonderful year uh, on the board with us. We're so glad to have you here. Last week, it was my great pleasure to attend and present the class for the awarding of diplomas at many of our high school graduations. We are very proud of each and every one of our 1,940 graduates and wish them well in their future endeavors. 
I also would like to add my thanks to everyone who helped to plan and carry out our graduation ceremonies and made them a special experience that our students will always remember. Next, I would like to congratulate our student athletes and coaches for a great spring season. Liberty and Manchester Valley High Schools won state championships in lacrosse, and Liberty won the tennis championship. In addition, Century, Francis Scott Key, Liberty, Manchester Valley, and South Carroll High Schools had individual state championship winners in seven track events. I also would like to congratulate our FFA students who participated in the state level career development events. The South Carroll High School Milk Quality and Products team finished first overall. Many students placed in the top 10 individually with one gold and one silver medal. Next, four students from Century High School were among seven students in the state receiving the top honor of Borlaug Scholar at this year's World Food Prize Maryland Youth Institute. These students researched and wrote papers related to sustainability and food security issues faced by a specific country or territory. Additionally, they proposed realistic and sustainable solutions that would mitigate some of the issues that face the people living in the region they chose. They then presented their papers and defended their solutions at the Maryland Youth Institute. Congratulations. Congratulations as well to Gabriel Guerrero, a rising senior at Winters Mill High School who was selected as one of 125 high school musicians from across the nation to perform with the All-American D-Day Band in Normandy and Paris. As musical ambassadors to France, the band performed the ceremonial music for the officially recognized commemoration and wreath laying ceremonies at the Brittany and Normandy American cemeteries and memorials. And finally, I would like to thank our students and staff for their hard work and dedication throughout the year. It is because of their efforts, as well as the incredible support of our parent community, that we have experienced another successful school year. I hope that everyone has a great summer. Why, thank you. All right, now we will move on to our reports, and the first one of the evening is the school construction report. Dr. McCabe. This is the standard monthly construction report. We are moving into the stage of excitement and a bit of anxiousness as we prepare the transition to the new East Middle School this summer. Mr. Marks cannot be with us tonight, but Mr. Prokop is here back <laughs> in the corner if you have any questions for him. Oh, she's going for it, Miss <laughs> Ms. Savigny. I couldn't go two months in a row without having a question on the construction report. Good evening, Mr. Evening. Prokop. Um, just a, a couple of quick questions on the, the kindergarten additions. Um, and I know that later on we're going to be looking at some of the, um, not the design documents, but the schematics, um, the, what's the phrase I'm looking for? The, the design, the, the award of bids? For the for the award of bids, but this isn't. This says the recommendation for the contract award uh, will be presented to the board of education, and it's not for the building. This is no, the design. It's for right. So it's the the contract award for the design. Right. Mm -hmm. Just wanted to be specific about um, what we we're going to be looking at because I think there's some overlapping um, items that I'm probably going to have questions about when we get to the award of bids. So okay, just wanted to understand that. Okay. So Dr. Dorsey? No, I was going to thank Mrs. Zvigny for bringing that up. Again, beside project description, we specify that it is for the design services. Do you see that at the top? Design services for kindergarten Oh, there you go. Okay. Yep, you're right. Mm -hmm. <laughs> I missed that distinction. Thank you. Anything else? Okay. No, I have another that's... question. Okay, yes, Dr. Okay. Dorsey. The East Middle tear down or knock down, do we know when that's going to occur? Uh, we should be, uh, the fencing will, will be going up later this week into, into next week and the following week we should begin to uh, demolish the building. And how long will that take, the, the demolition period? How long are you looking at? I, I know we'll be going into uh, September before we, before we really have everything to grade. Um, the beginning will be, we'll be removing some of the facade, things like that, 
the building won't be coming down in one not one uh, brick at a time it won't be coming down <laughs> one brick at a time but it won't also be imploded and all come down at once either <laughs> uh, i think there's a feeling out there that it's it's going to happen all at once but it's not but it will be off limits it will be unsafe once we put the fence up and begin our work okay. any um chance that we could save a few bricks to sell or yeah we've been uh, in touch with uh, three members of past graduating classes they've given me uh, numbers that they'd like to have and we're not selling the bricks we'll be happy to just put them in a safe location where they can pick them up and then distribute them to whoever's interested well, uh, at the at when we're you know when we're uh, when we get to that stage people were saying that the evening of the um, the final walkthrough they said they brought their money with them in case we were selling those <laughs> bricks they wanted to make sure they got one <laughs> well we never thought of that as a fundraiser to pay for so offset some yeah. of the costs we made <laughs> Wouldn't have had to do so much VE to get the project underway. <laughs> All right. And just kind of along those lines, is there, there's nothing that we're anticipating any issues with the school being ready to open, um, open its doors for the, the first day of school in September? We anticipate every issue. That's, that's, <laughs> that's why we don't sleep, and I don't think Jim sleeps either. Uh, no, we're, we're tracking on schedule. Mm -hmm. uh, if everything goes uh, according to schedule, uh, that we should be okay. We 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 have every intention of being open for the first day of school. Okay. All right. Thank you. And now, Dr. McKay, we will move on to personnel transaction items report, please. Board members, as with last month, the summer months are the time of year when we traditionally make many administrative reassignments to balance balance out school leadership teams. These do not require board approval, but I always bring them for your information. The transactions include uh, Michelle Becker from assistant principal at Carrolltown Elementary to assistant principal at Tawnytown Elementary. Erin Sikorsky from curriculum specialist in curriculum and instruction to assistant principal Carrolltown Elementary. Megan Becker, assistant principal at Mount Airy Middle to assistant principal East Middle. Elizabeth Donovan, principal Career and Technology Center to assistant principal Winters Mill High School. Comments, questions? Thank you. All right, now we'll move on to 5C, the annual report of the Carroll County Teacher Advisory Council 20. 22 to 2023. In June of each year, we bring the annual reports from each of the seven board appointed committees, which summarizes the significant activities of the prior year. Although it will take some time, I would like to ask each staff liaison to come forward and share just a very brief summary of what you have been working on this year. So we will start out with um, the Teacher Advisory Advisor. Council. Mm -hmm. Good evening, board members. Um, our Teacher Advisory Council, as usual, met uh, twice um, this past school year. It is a group that represents our teachers across all of our schools, um, levels, and disciplines as well. Um, the group uh, was, was uh, very engaged throughout the process, gave me lots of feedback. Um, they developed the agenda around topics that were of interest to them, and I also put in some topics uh, um, that where I really appreciated and, and wanted some feedback. But everything from team building um, to discussing our second step and, and sources of strength programs. Um, we talked about discipline data trends and, and some behavioral resources that exist for staff. Our model for quality instruction, um, what's new with some technology resources that we've had historically around performance matters. We've talked a lot about the blueprint um, and what that means currently and what that will mean in the future, along with technology, discipline, Schoology, and teacher workload, just to, to, to name a few. Thank you. Ms. Savigny. Um, Mr. Shockney, just wanted to thank you for, for that report and um, giving us the update. I just wanted to look at the, the recommendations that the committee had for the board. Um, I mean, I think the, fir the first two are givens, right? Um, 
you know, we're definitely going to continue to support educators as part of the, the blueprint implementation and also try to maintain clear communications. Um, on the third one, the expand the behavior and mental health resources for students. Yes. Um, I, I think that we're, we're definitely doing that. We right, are. As yeah. part of blueprint. Um, is the, is there anything in addition to that? Like, was there any concerns that the the TAC had? Well, I, I think not unlike what we have historically discussed here in that the complexities post-pandemic um, and that our students are facing as it relates to social, emotional, and behavioral um, resources, the resources that we're adding are very strategic along the through the lens of compensatory education. I think a, a, a common, uh, I think some feedback would be is obviously we're targeting those new resources in some very strategic places, but you know, continuing to, to expand those to more system wide um, will continue to be of, of benefit to our students. Yeah, I would certainly be interested in hearing any recommendation, any specific recommendations from a behavioral perspective from that group. I mean, like you said, we're, we're targeting very specific um, areas for schools with those new resources through the, yeah. the blueprint. But if there are, more I think it would be the same. It would be the same thing. Our counselors, our mental health therapists, our our social workers, those they, the, the same resources that we're strategizing through compensatory education, expanding those across um, other, you know, all schools would be of tremendous benefit to, to, to students. Okay. Thank, you. Thank you. All right, and now we will have the annual report of the Carroll County Career and Technical Education Local Advisory Council. Uh, let's see, is Mr. Eccles in the mm -hmm. room? There we go. Hello. So we have the annual report of the LAC. Um, the LAC met uh, four times over the course of the year. Um, we covered topics such as the CTE program updates, new initiatives that we're bringing forth. Uh, the LAC helped with the mock job interviews. We covered the blueprint updates for Pillar 3, including the career development initiatives and the 45% goal for students to earn industry recognized credentials or participate in an apprenticeship. And then our, at our last meeting, we did a data review for our comprehensive local needs assessment as required by the Perkins Law. And we'd like to thank Ms. Patagula for joining us for the meetings in absentia. And uh, uh, I would answer any questions that you may have. I would just say keep on advertising the great things that you do there and I mean we need to push that more because mm -hmm. we just need to give kudos to that that facility those employees those those educators there and our students and I just feel we're not we have got to push that and and do show everyone showcase that place all the time because as soon as somebody walks in that building it's like wow and then once you walk around it, it's even more wow. But we need to really promote that more. Mm -hmm. So please do so. Absolutely. Ms. Savigny. Wholeheartedly agree, Ms. Herbert. And um, I'll, I just wanted to look at the recommendations again to the board. Mm -hmm. um, how you're saying increased membership and active participation in LAC yes. and program, the PACs, and also increasing public outreach activities and opportunities for the current tech center. Is there anything that you specifically need from the board in order to help in those endeavors? Well, we found at our last series, and really since COVID, our participation has dropped off. So we have people whose names are on the LAC list who are, are not attending the meeting. Um, and so we sent out uh, a sort of questionnaire to get people's feedbacks because maybe the timing of the meetings was a problem uh, or um, needed a virtual option and those kinds of things. So we got some feedback on that. Um, but what we really could use is if, the, um, if you are aware of business partners, people in the community that would like to be part of it, please send those names to me because uh, we would like to have an active group. Um, you know, it's nice to have the role filled, but we need people in the room to actually be part of the discussion. Um, and then as far as public outreach, um, and there's a list on the recommendations of some specific events, um, but um, we need to just continually push and promote, and especially considering our new blueprint mandated focus on career development, continue talking about uh, the importance of what our students are doing now and how that relates to the careers they'll find themselves in later on. And that's important to everybody in the community. So keep highlighting that everywhere you go. That would be wonderful. Okay. Thank you. 
All right, and now we'll move on to the annual report of the Special Education Citizens Advisory Committee. Uh, Ms. Whittle. Thank you, Mr. Eccles. Good evening. Uh, our Citizens Advisory Committee has had some changes over this past year. We um, had a retirement of our uh, liaison from Carroll County after probably 13 or 14 years. So it was in a little bit of flux for this year, but I think we are off to a great start for the upcoming year. We have a new, um, a new liaison from our office. And in addition, for the first time in probably three years, we actually had a parent step up to be uh, the, the actual co-chair of the committee, which we were really struggling with. Similar to Mr. Eccles, we have had very low attendance since uh, the pandemic, and we have really uh, have planned for some changes, which will be alternating evenings and days and alternating topics and advisory meetings instead of really trying to cram everything into one so parents can much more focus on their areas of need for their children since we're spanning birth to 21 with our committee. So uh, we've had a couple of interesting uh, presentations, outside presenters come in as well as CCPS presenters. We had an awesome uh, resource, community resource fair with 60 vendors and really had a lot of feedback from the community that they would like that to happen every year instead of every other year. So we are looking for that. And then in addition, we had our CCAC awards evening, which is always wonderful. We have staff to staff awards and then we have uh, family awards as well and actually had uh, quite a few students even coming and, and uh, adding to the presentations. In terms of recommendations for the board, I think uh, the biggest one are uh, mostly focusing on inclusive practices. We have been, over the past four years really focused on that as a department and the group would really like to have more information on that and what our efforts are and then be able to you know to be able to advise the board in that area in particular Ms. Savigny um, thank you, Ms. Whittle. Um, just had um, a couple of questions for you again on the, the recommendations to the board. I know that you recommend supporting the staffing plan, and we're going to be talking about the staffing plan later yes. this, this afternoon, but is there active discussion at the, the CCAC meetings in terms of, okay, this is the staffing plan that we need in order to support our students? So I would say that they are not as active as, the, as they need to be. That is on the agenda for next year. That was a discussion item. So this year it was on the agenda and I think we had maybe three parents come and more community members and each time it got pushed back and so it is already on the agenda for uh, for next year which we have already you know developed okay thank you so. thank you very much mm -hmm. this time we need we'll have the annual report of the Carroll County Community Advisory Committee Miss Gaddis Good evening, board members. We had a great year, probably our best year yet, uh, ever. We increased the number of meetings of the Community Advisory Council from four to five at the request of the board, uh, and attendance was, was wonderful. We've had the best attendance that we've probably had since the beginning of the council. Uh, Dr. McCabe came and talked to the council uh, about her priorities as our new superintendent of schools. We had a lot of interest in school security. And as you can imagine, blueprint was a very big topic with parents. Uh, Dr. McCabe came back to the group and talked about blueprint and how the parents could support what we're trying to do as a school system and get the word out to their school communities. And uh, as always, we continued discussions on marketing the Community Advisory Council, increasing communication with parents and with our school communities. I want to thank you because I did come one night and I was very impressed. There was a lot of engagement from yes. everyone, 
and uh, that most of the time they were they were spot on with their comments and willing to help and they wanted to learn from each other so thank you it was it was it, the meeting i went to it was very it was very informative and i could see wheels turning about blueprint and it, yes they were they were very into the discussion uh, Ms. Savigny? I just want to echo your comments, Ms. Herbert. Yeah, I've heard a lot of comments in the community of people saying, you know, the CAC has been very engaged. Um, you know, they've been excited about the presentations, and they really feel like we've been open, transparent, trying to get as much feedback from the community as possible. So thank you for, for spearheading that. Um, and also, you're probably sensing a theme in my questions to the, the other committee <laughs> representatives, but just from a, a recommendations perspective, um, We've kind of gotten away, I think, for, for a, a period of time um, post-pandemic, we started saying, okay, at the end of every board meeting, we wanted to say, okay, is there something that came up, um, you know, over the course of this meeting that would be really good for the CAC to provide feedback on? Um, and I'd, I'd like to kind of get back to that if, if you think that that makes sense, right? Like maybe at the end of every meeting saying, oh, okay, this was a topic that... Mm -hmm that we think would be good for, for the CAC to either opine on or try to take certain messages back to the community. But oh, you can still put on their blueprint right now. <laughs> well, and I can tell you we have a full agenda for next year okay. of items that they That's would great. like to, to study. Okay. And I would like to thank you for the board's support. I know that CAC has been uh, a topic of conversation for many years with the board, and I feel like it really came together this year. We had good meetings and we had great participation, mm -hmm. and we're really looking forward to next year. They were really like energized at that meeting. Yes. I, I, I was like, I, I think I went to two mm -hmm. because you were, yes, yeah, she was away. Mm -hmm. But I, I, I was very impressed, and uh, they were all w very engaged. Mm -hmm. Thank you. So are there ways that we can, are, are there plans to specifically use the CAC at this point to provide input on the blueprint? Yes, and that's part of um, what Ms. Gaddis was talking about when she talked about they have a full agenda already yes. for next year. And the first thing they've requested for next year is for Dr. McCabe to come back again <laughs> at the first meeting and give an update on blueprint and talk more about what they can do okay. to support what we're trying to do as a school system. Okay, great. Okay. Thank you. All right, and now we will have the annual report of the Carroll County Curriculum Council. Oh, um, oops. Did you? Oh, I'm sorry. <laughs> Hold on, we got one more question or comment. She's learned how to press the button. Yep. <laughs> Just a comment. I was able to attend the CAC meetings this year as a student representative, and it was just fantastic to see that parents were really willing to hear what I was saying as well, and I was really excited to hear that uh, a lot of the thoughts that parents and students had were able to be aligned, and that was just really amazing. That was, thank you. And we'd like to thank you for being there and providing the student perspective. It, it's very helpful for the group. Thank you. Now, Mr. Mr. Wernick. <laughs> Good evening. Um, Curriculum Council actually met five times this year, and um, we had an additional session. Um, so we had four actually council um, meetings, Curriculum Council meetings, and we had one materials workshop meeting. Um, the November meeting started off, we were talking about mental health. Uh, we really wanted to look at second steps, sources of strength, and how um, we are addressing um, the curriculum through um, the support mental health. Um, in, in our January meeting, we, we then transitioned to really looking at um, the elementary social studies program and what that program um, actually entails because some of the um, standards um, have changed. So we looked at materials, we looked at field trips that may be beneficial, um, as well as the curriculum. We also had a gifted and talented and advanced academics um, session, and it actually piggybacked on when um, we had the presentation to, to the Board of Education, so the council had a lot of questions about that and, and where we're moving with um, gifted and talented uh, program, um, you know, in the future. In March, we thought it was a great time to really look at the blueprint um, and what does the blueprint really uh, look like for a curriculum? What does it look like um, as we look at uh, pre-K as well as, as instruction? 
And then we st uh, took the other part of um, that um, session and we really reviewed um, the materials. We looked at the materials, we discussed the materials, and it was the first time that our uh, curriculum council actually saw the materials. They were all presented, they were sitting in the back, and we had about an hour or so um, where anybody could grab the materials, look at them, and we discussed. We just had an, an open uh, discussion and forum. At that point um, in April, we actually had a session where all the materials were here uh, at the Board of Education. We were here for the majority of the day. Anybody could come in from the council, review the materials, provide feedback, ask questions to supervisors or myself. Um, and so that was one addition that we included this year. And then in May, we then had updates about technology. Um, the Curriculum Council really wanted to uh, you know, find out a little bit, bit more about what technology we use, our transition from Google to Microsoft, Schoology, and, and uh, implementation through technology. And then um, the final part of that day was really, again, materials discussion. And um, we had a wonderful discussion about a couple books. Um, and it really uh, came to light um, you know, how beneficial those discussions were because Talking through the instructional lens and through the, the parent lens really helped us to, uh, for our participants to decide how they wanted to vote. And so then um, we ended that meeting with allowing the participants um, to vote um, on the instructional materials that will come to you later tonight. The other piece that I just wanted to uh, glean a couple of areas is Next year, even though we had our evening in April or a day in April where we could actually review the materials, we're actually going to maybe not have it at central office, maybe have it in the community somewhere. Because what we found is not everyone may be able to come to central office. So maybe we'll go out in the community, maybe to a public library or a public place that has m those materials so that um, anybody on the curriculum council can attend and, 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 and look at uh, those materials as, as, as well. Ms. Battaglia. I would like to thank you for that because I think that is something I think we've always kind of all heard is there wasn't like enough time or it was only allowed one day um, or not easy to come and look at the material. So I think it, that's really important to make sure that the community does get the opportunity, whether it's kind of like a county tour, one here, one there, that they come, come and look at everything in a timely manner. And I do appreciate that and advertise a little more as well. Thank you. Dr. Dorsey. I too wanted to thank you for being so flexible in your thinking um, because again, it just shows you were really responsive to feedback because I know at that last meeting, some parents had brought up the fact that, you know, if um, the materials had been on display, let's say in other parts of the community that maybe they would have been able to attend. Because I think the day that you had set aside here at Central, it was just a very small number of people who were able to make it in that day. We did, um, although it was advertised to Curriculum Council multiple times, um, we didn't have as many as I had hoped to. Mm -hmm. And we also had the materials available for you know two, almost two and a half months that anybody could come in, sign them out. We did have some individuals take advantage of that in the community, but we felt if we had like two two sessions, maybe um, you know in a northern end, southern end, somewhere you know in between, then more, maybe more people would be able to access those materials and ask questions, and maybe more flexible hours as well. You know, because if they can't come during the actual workday, mm -hmm. um, maybe some evening you know opportunities for them. And again, by building in that some time in that last session for us to have some discussion about the materials. I think that was very, very beneficial. Um, because again, in the past, people have said, you know, I've had questions and I've put, it on, put those questions on the feedback forms, but didn't have that personal connection as far as, um, you know, the supervisors, let's say, feedback or your feedback concerning um, those items. But I think this time, with having those issues raised during the session when everyone was in attendance, that you know, it did give us a, a nice opportunity to, to hear the concerns, first of all, and then to hear the feedback. Um, so again, I found that to be very um, beneficial, and I, I think other council members felt that way as well. So thanks to you um, for facilitating our um, curriculum council meetings, and again, thanks for being flexible and hearing and responding um, to what the members have asked for. Thank so you. thanks. Ms. Savigny. Yeah. 
And, and Pat, I want to reiterate some of that. Like, I think, and that showed in the recommendations of the curriculum materials that we'll be reviewing later. I mean, every year there's always been a couple of comments in there, like people that voted no on a couple of items or that made some comments that were very concerning. And there was none of that this year. And, and I think that mu that has to be due to, you know, the flexibility that you had and the additional time built in to ask the questions at the end, like maybe I'm interpreting this the wrong way and I don't want this to hold it up, but I want to address this question. And so I think it, it, it played out very nicely in the, in the recommendations and the materials that we'll, that we'll be reviewing later. So thank you for that. You're welcome. Thank you. All right. Thank you so much. You're moving a little slow there. And, and thank you for being here tonight, <laughs> yes. Mr. Wernick. After I think you probably need ice on that, don't you? Yeah. And it probably should be propped up. <laughs> right? Okay. <laughs> At this time, we will have the annual report of the Carroll County Security Advisory. Mr. O'Neill will, um, will give the report tonight in lieu of Mr. Pierce, who couldn't be with us this evening. Mr. Pierce couldn't be here. Mr. Elliott, the other half of our security office, is here, and he'll be happy to help out with questions or conversation. Um, the Security Advisory Council meets four times a year as a full council, and then a couple of years ago, uh, the council made a decision to form into three sub working subcommittees of the council. And, and those groups meet throughout the year to get the work done and, and provide oversight for the work of the council. The security council is maybe somewhat different than some of the others in that it, it includes representation from Sheriff DeWeese's command, county government, our staff, um, employees of all levels of the school system and, and parents. Um, and so it, it's, it's been very nice to have all of that support. Uh, in fact, the last few chairs have been a member of, of Sheriff DeWeese's command, chairs of the council. And we also are happy to have Mrs. Herbert and Ms. Battaglia uh, as, as part of the council as well. So the three focus areas for the, for the council have been the three subcommittee areas, uh, sort of auditing the effectiveness of the program, training and training exercises, and then outreach to parents and students. And um, I'll just maybe highlight one thing of each one. Under, under auditing the effectiveness of the program, that committee is led by Mr. Prokop. I think we, we had a work session on security sometime back and talked about how we were uh, working with technology services to unveil an app that would become the tool we would use to assess the program at each school site. That's now functioning and we're building that baseline of data, understanding where our consistent challenges might be, uh, areas to, to focus in on and look at. And, um, and also trying to tie uh, so on, on more of sort of the physical things, like a camera not working, tie that directly into the work order system for Mr. Prokop and his people. Uh, training and exercise, we're very fortunate to have the county government or the county's uh, emergency manager, Valerie Hawkins, chair that subgroup. Um, and they, they've been working and developing and have developed sort of a, a flexible toolkit that school principal school leaders can choose from to tailor different kinds of training exercises at their school level. Um, and I know I said one per, but also this summer, members of the committee are working to do kind of a full scale functional exercise or simulation exercise in the county to include our folks, the, the, the sheriff's office, other agencies, municipalities. And so we're excited to see one of those exercises take place again. And. Uh, Parent outreach, uh, Ms. Gaddis, when she talked about the CAC, Mr. Pierce has been out to the CAC, to the countywide uh, parent organization group, other groups. He has also broadened a student uh, focus group that Mr. Williams, his predecessor, once formed and sort of increased the frequency of engagement with a representative group of our students to give them, as they always ask for, more of, a, more of an opportunity for feedback and understanding. And so that's, that's been, in my mind, one of our, our really big positives that uh, Curtis has underway as well. I'll pause and see if you have questions for Brian. Mr. Whistler. All right, thank you so much. Uh, maybe not necessarily a response is needed, but just um, some things maybe the, the um, committee can consider here as we move forward. I think we're supposed to receive a nice sizable um, settlement from the vaping issue. Uh, and so maybe this committee can investigate whether there are some ways we can use some of those funds for kind of like vaping detection sensors in our schools or, um, and then also I'd maybe get some, thoughts or suggestions on how well they think the bus cameras are going as far as the safety of students when they're on buses and the, the, you know, the cars going past park buses when they're onloading and offloading students. But just some suggestions maybe, sure. maybe for the committee to think about as, as we go forward. Um, Thank you. I'll, I'll defer to this. I know you were, I'll defer to the superintendent on the possible settlement funds. I think you mm -hmm. 
probably were focused on student services. Yes, we, we, we we're, we're focused on making sure that we do spend the funds in a way that um, will help our students um, with any of the issues that they may have that, that may lead them uh, to vaping. And so um, Mr. Streaker and his folks will be working with us on some uh, options for, for how to spend that settlement money. So, but thank you for that. Yes, yes. Ms. Savigny. Um, Ms. McCabe, would that, would that come to the board to kind of talk about, um, you know, what potential ideas are? Yes, we'll bring that um, to the board before any final decisions are made. Okay, okay, that would be great, because I know that there are some significant concerns still with vaping in, in the high schools. I mean, it's, mm -hmm. it's pretty rampant. Um, yes. Yeah. Yeah. So, okay. Ms. Battaglia. I just wanted to say... Um, Thank you to everyone from the Security Advisory Council. It's been really important for certain members to you know, understand that there are things that are taking place. Um, things are being reviewed consistently, constantly. Um, concerns regarding cameras, doors are being really evaluated and really taken into consideration. and being taken seriously. I know one of the big discussions was regarding rec councils because they, you know, making sure that the policy is followed. The doors are locked. They have to have somebody there. Um, and I know some people find it, you know, it's an inconvenience, but sometimes that inconvenience is for safety reasons. So I do appreciate everything that they have done. And, and not just rec councils, but after evening, after school activities. And, yeah. it's, uh, and that's part of the accountability, but it's not a hammer, not at first. It's it's changing some culture and getting some consistency over time. So mm -hmm. we're, we're, we're getting there. Um, and then, Mr. Whistler, I didn't want to leave your last question unanswered. So the, the, the Security Council initially did endorse the, the, the safety items, including the cameras on buses. It became a joint initiative with Sheriff DeWeese. Um, he sort of owns that part of it, although obviously it's, it's tied to us. So the council has that information. Um, I believe board, it was probably like a year ago that Lieutenant Lawrence came here and presented some, some feedback. Mm -hmm. And I think if Mr. Hardesty will not in agreement recently, the sheriff or Major Stem or, or someone from his staff did a public presentation to the commissioners and asked Mike to be there to be part of that. We can bring that back here at a future date if you would like as well, so, some updates. Yeah, I have had some anecdotal feedback from some bus drivers around the county about how sometimes cameras work, they don't work, um, you know, kinds of operability issues with cameras. But again, it's very anecdotal, sure. doesn't mean there's a problem, but, but I, I appreciate you keeping us connected with that. Absolutely. And I'm really happy that we increased our department by 50% and <laughs> um, that Brian and Curtis work hand in hand because there was no way that one person could do this whole job and they do work very well together and thank you and welcome. <laughs> Glad you're here now. This is home. <laughs> and now we will have the annual report of the Family Life Advisory Committee. Mr. Wernick will make his back his way back to the microphone. Oh, I should have let him stay. <laughs> very cool. Very, very cool. <laughs> The Family Life Advisory Committee actually met um, four times in total, and then the subcommittee, the elementary subcommittee, also met, uh, so for a total of five uh, total meetings. Um, we met in September, um, and we started off really with uh, looking at the state standards. Um, there were some changes to the state standards, um, so we looked at the, the state standards that were provided last July uh, to, to our uh, uh, council. Um, we also looked at uh, the middle and high school frameworks, the work that had been done previously to make sure that they were um, ready to be sent um, to the Board of Education for approval um, at that September meeting. In uh, December, we then reviewed the uh, approval, the uh, information that was provided to the board after they approved the middle and high school frameworks. We started looking at um, and discussing uh, parent permissions um, for next year for both middle and, and high schools um, based on uh, options that parents would have um, for the um, frameworks. We, uh, in uh, February, we met again and uh, a side-by-side -side framework was uh, created both with a Carroll County Public Schools uh, framework and the state framework so that we could make a comparison of um, the standards 
as well as a uh, scope and sequence of the lessons and standards that would be taught um, within the Carroll County Public Schools um, framework. In, at our April meeting, um, we reviewed some materials um, that we wanted to include uh, to supplement the, the family life curriculum as well as we talked about and discussed uh, the professional learning day for health teachers that uh, Mrs. Vigny uh, spoke about earlier um, and what that would look like. We brought a rough draft of the speakers and discussed what um, those speakers would actually share with uh, the teachers. And then um, the subcommittee, which was the elementary subcommittee, met uh, in November. Um, they actually met to review and create the uh, Carroll County Public Schools uh, framework for the elementary um, health uh, family life portion which will not begin next year but will begin the following year so only uh, middle school and high school health one and health two will be implemented next year next school year the following year will actually be the elementary uh, portion but we wanted to make sure that we had that ready to go um, so that we can continue to work on that on the upcoming year You know Ms. Savigny. Yes. And Mr. Warnick, thanks for that. Um, just a couple of things to, to add to it was with the permission forms that will be coming out electronically, right, for, for this next coming school year. So parents will see online, the, so they'll have the local version of the health framework, the, the state version, and then a complete opt-out, right, like so the the nothing version, right? Um, and, but that will be part of the elections and information that students have to provide at the beginning of the year, like permissions for, for all the other things, you know, that you have to provide permission for in the beginning of the year. So that'll all be um, electronically uh, taken care of. So which hopefully will help our health teachers in terms of like all the follow-up work that had to be done previously. Hopefully a lot of this will happen automatically um, moving forward. Um, so we're pretty we're pretty happy about how that's how that's absolutely uh, um we um you know we actually have it down in tech services there's uh looking at it now provided us a rough draft um and then we'll continue to work with them to have it ready for august when those permissions go out to parents right and in august we will be having an additional meeting so the the, the group did agree to have one additional meeting over the summer because you know there's kind of this mad dash to create some of the additional um, lesson plans and so um, the the team agreed or the committee agreed to get together to review those lesson plans at, before the end of the summer mm -hmm. mr. Whistler Hi, mr. mr. Warnick I, again I, I got to tell you my hats off to you Ms. Tobias um, our colleague Ms. Savigny this is probably one of the most in intensely viewed committees that we have um, you, it's there's so many parents that are concerned about this health framework so many teachers especially health teachers that don't want to teach various aspects of it that have spoken to me and and I got to tell you you're doing a wonderful job with staff with um, um, the community parents I, I just I, I, I am so comfortable personally with where you're going how this is evolving and um, it was something that was really concerning me this time last year and and I got to tell you I I am so appreciative of your efforts and uh, I think our students are going to be well served by your efforts thank you so much thank you Ms. Battaglia um so I guess this can be for both of you is the permission slip going to have a summary of what the state version is and what the county version is and when I mean by summary I mean like the state version wants to have discussions regarding anal sex so I want that I would I mean that should be stated like this version is to discuss this it would actually have um, a side-by-side -side, so the Carroll County standards as well as, as the Maryland state standards so it would actually specify all those standards okay you're literally going to see them side by side Perfect. For here each grade is, here's level. the local version. Here is the the state version. At and then each you, level. Exactly. you would decide. For each grade level, sixth grade, seventh, eighth, health one and health two. You would be able to click on it and see that side by side that I presented um, earlier in in the year. And then that's when the parent would sign up which one they want. Correct. Mm -hmm. Okay. All right. Good. Good to hear. Thank you for all your work. Thank you. All right. At this time, I need a motion for the approval of the ward of bids. So moved by Mr. Whistler, seconded by I'll second it. by Dr. Dorsey, Miss Do, excuse me, Dr. McCabe. There are 19 items on the award of bids, but many are items we've discussed recently in other contexts. There are also routine items and annual items. 
In light of the length of the agenda this evening, I thought I would address the items generally and discuss some of them in groups. Then if the board is prepared, you could vote on the award of bids or single, single out any items for additional discussion. So items one through three are part of the approved capital program and were part of the educational facilities master plan work session we held a couple of weeks ago. Uh, then there are several items that are annual contracts for different commodities or services, including um, items four, five, seven, 10, and 11. Mm -hmm. And then items 12, 13, and 14 are three of the playground projects that we've discussed during the legislative session wrap up as the delegation was able to secure capital funds to supplement the school community's fundraising. Items 15 through 19 are all annual contracts that we bring once each summer in recognition that they are technology contracts for the system that will exceed $25,000 procurement threshold during the course of the year. Lastly, I did want to highlight item eight, which relates to the fire that occurred recently at South Carroll High School. This is acknowledgement of the emergency procurement we use to address the situation. It does not capture the full cost of the fire though. Moreover, I wanted to recognize Principal Doherty and her team, as well as our facilities folks who responded very quickly and calmly, had school reopened Monday and worked with the faculty, students, and families to work through what was a challenge but could have been much worse for us. So thank you very much. Questions, board members? Ms. Sabigny. <laughs> <laughs> Didn't even have to wait for no, me. No, I watched your hand. Did you? Okay. Um, uh, Ms. McCabe, so just looking at numbers two and three, because um, two is the is for the scope study for the pre-K additions, right, across the system, and then number three is the the kindergarten additions. Mm -hmm. um, but for the schools where the kindergarten additions and a pre-K mm -hmm. are being done, are mm -hmm. are the single pre the the one single pre-K at those four schools? Mm -hmm. Is that in, which one? Which one of those projects are they included in? Just the one single pre-K class? So for the four schools where we're doing kindergarten additions, yeah. right, there's also a pre-K room, mm -hmm. right, to go along with those kindergarten additions. Mm -hmm. So those four pre-Ks are part of the kindergarten edition project, or are they part of the overall pre-K additions? So number two is pre-K, right? Pre-K. Right. Number but but pre-K is pre-K for... It's more across the system, right? Yes. Uh, but yes. The, the, the answer to your question is not just the four. <laughs> Pre-K will be considered as a part of those kindergarten projects. Well, so we'll be looking at them as, uh, you know, uh, comprehensively. Okay. That, okay. So yeah. they will have so, those. So we're not going to come back with another tack yeah. on another addition a year after putting an addition mm -hmm. or something like that. So. Right. Because well, the the pre K, I guess the pre K project. I was thinking like it's not just the four schools that were that we're right. talking about the pre K. Right. It's additional schools. Right. Mm -hmm. right. It, okay. it's, mm -hmm. it, it, it's all the schools that are going to have pre K programs. So we're looking at twenty schools. Mm -hmm. Right. Okay. So I just wanted to make sure we understood where certain ones of the pre K <laughs> resided as part of the scope. Right. It can get confusing. Mr. Whistler? Yes, I appreciate it. For items 12, 13, and 14, the playgrounds, do you have any idea on uh, timeline to completion for these projects? Is it a six month ordeal, nine month ordeal, one year? I'm just trying to get an idea before I'm asked by so many members in the community. <laughs> yeah, uh, the, the lead time on the, on the equipment that we're seeing for the playgrounds can be upwards of 12 to 16 weeks. So, that's the kind of time frame we'd be looking at, maybe about four months out, give or take. But then it's also going to be weather dependent, sure. and also you can see the sizes of the of the uh, of the, of, the the the, lot, the, the, the playgrounds are uh, differ quite a bit. So exactly when? But I I would look out. It is hard hard to say, but I would look out at least uh, uh, four months for the for the lead time, and then go from there. And that's when they start, or when that's when they. So when it would happen? That was this beginning, yes. Beginning, so for, uh, in about three to four or five months, depending upon the project. Okay, uh, I would, that's when it I would, would start. say, yeah, you're, you're, we're probably, in all likelihood, with uh, with weather, we could be into the spring. Okay, and then any idea on how long these projects typically take once they do break ground? Is it, are they finished like in weeks, months, or? It's 
it's it's usually it's not going to be months, uh, but it's more more about like weeks. Okay, great. So yeah, I mean, hoping by spring these things can be be used. That's, I would that, say that, that would be nice. That would be that's what I'd shoot for. Yeah. Well, thank you so much. I really appreciate it. Okay, Ms. Savigny. Oh, thanks. Um, I, I just did want to go back to, I had a follow-up question on okay. number three. No, that's okay. Um, I was just looking at the, so the Mos, the we're recommending the, the bid be awarded to Mosley Architects, because um, I understand, you know, they, they, they were the highest scorer for the rubric. Just wanted to understand if we've used them before, because, um, you know, just kind of noticing, you know, Horde, Copeland, and Mocked, we've used them on multiple occasions mm -hmm. um, with a lot of success. So just, just um, trying to understand, you know, which they were, just barely beaten out, right, mm -hmm. from the, on the rubric. So, trying to understand if we've used Mosley before, and, yeah. and Mosley, I think, is new for us. No, but, the oh, the greenhouse. Yes, yeah, so a smaller project. One of the smaller projects we did. Okay. Uh, so we did the yeah the greenhouse project. So, but yeah, we feel they're capable of, okay. of handling. Okay. okay. Great. Um, did, that, were there? I, I have questions on keep, other ones. Keep but, going. Okay. All right. Um, on number 11 for the athletic trainer services, um, so the, the incumbent provider chose not to submit a proposal? That's correct, Ms. Vigny. Um, is there a specific reason for that? Um, they felt that, um, well, they, they had a previous uh, zero bid contract and they felt that it was, um, they could not meet the threshold of where they thought it would be competitive. Okay, okay. And do we know what the, the annual cost was previously compared to this 336000 It was a zero-bid contract we paid for overtime. Okay. That was part of the issue is um, I th the contract was written so that uh, I think they were hoping to get more referrals. Okay. Okay. Thank you. Thank you. Um, let's see. What is the – oh, and the, the other question that I had was on the last five. I know these are IT-related type contracts that come up every year. Um, just trying to get a gauge for – what we think the, the cost increase is from an inflationary perspective each year, right? Like just, so we, we tend to basically say these are just, um, you know, piggyback or we're extending the contract. So just trying to get a gauge on what is the annual expenditure for these and how much did it increase over last year? Um, I mean, they're used for when we go to buy something. If you're asking like, for example, like the meat contract, I mean, it, it, it's a bunch of different things, but I would say, Computers actually have not gone up as much as the, the you know, everything else from an inflation perspective. Um, but obviously we're spending more than we used to because we have the one-to-one -one initiative. So that's something that, you know, I think I mentioned the last time I stood up here months ago that we had a, an analysis of, the, of that program and exactly. So we're, we, we have a, a shared that and it's something that we're going to have to look at is how we're going to um, – you know, fund that going forward. But as far as an inflationary, I mean, we, are, we tend to, it, it's, it's not that, it, it's not that significant. I mean, if I, I look back over last year, what we spent versus the previous year, um, it is, it's not been terribly significant. And, and during uh, COVID, we actually, there were some uh, qu quantity discounts because we bought things in large quantities. So we actually did better on some pricing. So it really, it really depends, but it's not, um, you know, like uh, the, the, the it, it's primarily the technology equipment, the, the computers, and like I said, so that, that it's really um, kind of it, it kind of varies. It depends on the quantity and things like that. So it's hard to really answer the the question and say it's X percentage um, inflation. I, I you know I, I know that's not a good answer, but I, it, it's really it, it it varies. Okay, but it's not terribly concerning to you in no, terms no, of no, not at all. I mean, levels. the biggest okay. concern, as I said, is the fact that we use federal money to start the one-to-one -one initiative and now mm -hmm. that doesn't exist and so now that we've got to get start thinking about a replacement cycle to sustain that obviously there it's going to have significant impact on, on our on our budget so um and we have a, a detailed um document that addresses the you know looking historically what we spent and what we have to spend now if we're going to sustain that program but just as an overall, if like if all things had stayed the same, no, there's not a great concern. It's that it's that specific thing, the one-to-one -one program, that is the area of concern. Okay, and I uh, thank you for that, Mr. Davis. I, I know that the board had asked about that in the past, saying, okay, we used federal dollars really to kind of get us up to to speed during the pandemic. But what is our replacement 
plan, right? Like that's going to be significant dollars that we've never had to budget for before. But it sounds like there's a plan in place. Is it correct, something correct. that will come we, we to the board We did an analysis, soon? and what, what we did is we, we originally, when I spoke about this probably in January, we were getting ready to release it, and we decided that we wanted to wait and get through most of the school year. So because this school year, the computers were one year older, and we wanted to get a better feel for exactly you know, what the kind of damage, you know, the, you know, uh, repairs and things like that. So mm -hmm. we have numbers where we've, you know, we, we have two years worth of data and this year's probably the, a better uh, data set to analyze because it was when we had all elementary, mm -hmm. we had the full one-to-one -one, um, across the full school system. So we looked at it if we did a three-year replacement cycle versus a five-year replacement cycle and repair cost because we only have a three-year warranty, so the mm -hmm. repair cost would be much greater. So we've kind of we've created a recommendation um, that we've submitted, um, you know, that it's basically a four-year replacement cycle. Um, okay. So all the details we have all that all those details, and I, I mean I'm happy to share any of that with uh, with you. Okay, would we be able to see that as part of next year's budgeting cycle, just so we understand what kind of impact that, yes. that would have? Okay, Absolutely. fantastic. Thank you. Thank you. Okay. I'm not All right. <laughs> okay, I call for the vote. All those in favor, signify by saying aye. 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 Opposed? It passes unanimously. Now I need a motion for the approval of the 2024-2025 Educational Facilities Master Plan. So moved. By Ms. Pataglia, seconded by? I'll by Mr. Whistler. Thank you. We held a work session on the EFMP on July 31st so that staff could present key highlights and seek direction from the board. The plan submitted for your action this evening reflects that discussion. With your approval this evening, we'll, we will be able to provide the plan to the state by their July 1st deadline. <laughs> All right, seeing that. Um, I, I just wanted to say, I thought that our session um, on the 31st was fantastic. It was just, I uh, want to thank staff for all the, the information that was brought forward, and I think it was a, a great, robust discussion. Um, so just very thankful for that. Yep. So. Yes, and I do thank everybody because it is not easy. Okay, I call for the vote. All those in favor, signify by saying aye. 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 Opposed? It passes unanimously. Now I need a motion for the approval of textbooks and instructional materials for 2023-24. So moved. By Dr. Dorsey, seconded by Ms. Battaglia. These are the items that have been through the process for the selection of textbooks and instructional materials. Mr. Wernick is available for any questions or discussion. I normally don't say anything about this, but I am telling you, it was so nice to see all those large numbers of uh, people reading these books. It was amazing. So thank you. I don't know how you did that, but uh, job well done because in, in past years, there have been some readings and then zero readings. So I really do appreciate this. Dr. Dorsey, did you want to say anything? No, I mean, it was just a pleasure to be the board representative um, for this committee. Miss um, Battaglia. Uh, the only question I had was, um, was this all the comments that were made on each of the materials? Yes. So, you know, although people reviewed, they may not have made comments specific. Okay. So these were all the written comments. Um, and then if someone abstained, um, it really meant that they did not re be review that book. They didn't have time to look at it or did not look at it. So it's no negative comment on there. It just meant they didn't review. Thank you. Ms. Savigny. So yeah, I just want to agree with Ms. Herbert and Dr. Dorsey about, you know, that it was really great to see that um, so many folks read the books and that a lot of the questions and concerns that you could see, so there were some questions along the way, but those were addressed clearly as part of the process. So that was really, really um, great to see. Um, I did have one question about um, the social studies books. Um, so both for, I think it was for the elementary school no, I guess it was just the elementary school. So on page eight, it kind of it looked like a lot of the social studies books are are historical fiction, rather historical fiction rather than 
history. Well, um, so it was just trying to understand. Okay, why, why were there so many historical fiction books being recommended rather than actual history books? Absolutely. So we actually <laughs> have history books that is taught in social studies, but we have the humanities block. So we integrate a lot of the readings into um, small group instruction or into um, English language arts. So those are the texts that would actually be used at grade level for students to read to gain reading skills through a history context. Perspective. Exactly. Okay. Okay. Perspective. okay. So there still are there still are all of the plentiful history resources that are being used um, in the social studies curriculum. This is just a supplement on the humanities mm -hmm. side. Correct. There are textbooks that we actually use that are social studies textbooks, but this is more of a supplemental. Okay. Mm -hmm. Okay. Great. And mainly for reading groups. Yeah. You know, as, right. as they're being pulled. So. Right. Okay. Yeah. I just happened to notice that they almost all of them said historical fiction. I was mm -hmm. like, wait, what's going on here? <laughs> okay. So thank you for that. And I have to admit, Thanks. some of them were real quick reads. We had a lot of pre-K, K books in the well. health area. So <laughs> thankfully, they were nice and short. And um, again, it was easy to pretty much evaluate those um, because of yeah. the, the short text. Right. There um, were a lot of health books on there. <laughs> there were. And again, most of those were for the pre-K and K um, mm -hmm. areas. But it was great level. participation. That's yeah. that, was, that was just fantastic because in years past, we have not seen that. That is true. Well, and again, they did a great job. Each supervisor really, um, at the very beginning, pretty much shared the materials that were going to be up um, for our review. So they gave us some background knowledge, you know, before we got started and before we had a chance to look at the books. And for at least one of them, I think it was only um, a recommendation from one school um, for a particular um, book that was on the list. So again, just having that background knowledge and seeing how the supervisors saw the teachers actually using the materials mm -hmm. was really helpful. Okay. Right. All right, I call for the vote. All those in favor, signify by saying aye. 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 Opposed? It, pa it passes unanimously. And now I need a motion for the approval of transfer of school bus contracts. So, so moved. By Ms. Savigny, seconded by Second. Ms. Battaglia. We have one routine transfer of a bus contract from one contractor to another. Any questions? I would like to thank Ms. Seip for her years of driving a school bus and uh, appreciate all her, all her work. Um, now, I do have, I don't know where to bring this up, but the new people coming from Harrod County are they in our program and they're going to get all their license all taken care of and all that kind of stuff? Yes, okay, and their buses are going to be okay and meet our certifications. I'm just, you know, I just don't want to, I worry about, mm -hmm. you know, school's going to be here before you turn around and I just want to make sure that how many buses they have and their, and their drivers are all uh, certified by Carroll County and the buses are certified by Carroll County. I'm as sure as I can be that they're scheduled for sessions in the summer so that we'll be ready by. Okay, and the buses are okay too. So I just want to make sure. Okay. All right. I know it's a little off track, but I just worry because I do not want to not have a, a whole company not have bus drivers and be able to take care of that uh, because the wheel, that's the only way we get them there. I call for the vote. All those in favor, signify by saying aye. 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 Opposed? It passes unanimously. Now I need a motion for the approval of the 2023-24 Special Education Staffing Plan. So moved. By Dr. Dorsey, seconded by? Second. By Ms. Battaglia. Each year, Comar requires that we have a special education staffing plan. Special education staffing is a little more complex than staffing in uh, general ed as it also considers student case hours assigned to staff. Ms. Whittle is here for any questions that you may have. <laughs> oh, I was gonna bet on her. <laughs> Ms. Savigny. Thank you. Good evening again, Ms. Whittle. <laughs> So you, you now have the pleasure of taking all the, the questions that I had that, that Nick had to That's field all the, the last several years. Uh, but thank you for this report. Um, one of the things that I noticed, so it, it does not look like we're increasing the staffing level um, at all in the requests. Everything was very consistent from last year. That is correct. Across the board. The, the one place that I did see, there was actually a decrease in instructional assistance of eight and a half? 
Yes. Um, I was just comparing from, from last year's report, and it looked like there was a reduction of eight and a half instructional assistants. So we have um, a few positions that we surplused in terms of or, or surplusing in terms of teaching staff, which would remove the need for uh, for that. And then also through uh, our specialized programs, we've had some fluctuation in the number of students. Okay. Yeah, I did see that. That's one of the reasons why I was asking was because there is an increase of, you know, of, mm -hmm. what is that, over 100 students, about 120. Correct six students right. um so just wanted to make sure that with a you know that you still felt that there was a, there were enough resources there to be yes, balanced we, yes okay okay so and i was just trying to understand on the the fiscal impact on the on the cover page of this it says that it's mm -hmm. 6.8 million just trying to understand what is the genesis of that number because i'm looking at um if you look at the the totals for fy23 what the total budget were versus what we're expecting the total budget to be for fy24 it actually looks like a decrease it does look like a decrease and some of that uh decrease had to do with additional fundings that we had for some of our recovery uh compensatory recovery compensatory um funds for that right Okay, so that, that would have been reported in the, it would not necessarily have been budgeted last year, Correct. but it would be reported as part of the, the funds Correct. that, that and we received. Correct, we are received. making our way through that at a very rapid rate, and we should be hopefully done after mm -hmm. this summer with that. Okay, so there's definitely not a decrease there. It's there just is a not rolling a off of the federal, federal Correct. funds. Okay, okay. And, and um, some of our, um, our state uh, grant funds as well. Okay, okay. And then I guess um, on, on page nine, where it talks about the impact of COVID-19 recovery on special education staffing, um, is that, can we get just an update on, you know, getting all those compensatory services in? Like, are, are we up to speed and do we expect there? We are, we have, we provided services through the spring. We have a group through, through the summer, but we are down, we are getting down to, um, you know, really to the end now. So hopefully everyone takes advantage over the summer that is being offered. Uh, we should have maybe a handful of kids, as long as that goes as planned, into the, into the next school year. Okay. okay. The only uh, issue we're having, we have a couple of students that have moved out of state. We're still responsible for tracking them down and okay. assuring that services are provided. So we're working on that currently. Okay. All right. Thank you. Okay. All right, I call for the vote. All those in favor signify by saying aye. 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 Approved, I mean, opposed. Passes unanimously. And now I need a motion for the approval of the FY 2023 operating budget. Adjustment 23-01. So by Ms. Pataglia, seconded by? I'll second. By Ms. Sabigny. These next four items, six, F, G, H, and I, uh, I also want to discuss as a group and then the board will need to act on each one. At the conclusion of each fiscal year, we bring any necessary budget adjustments or transfers to the major categories of the budget. And a budget adjustment means that there is an overall change either positive or negative to that budget category. A transfer means that we've realized savings within one area of the operating budget this year and we need to apply those savings to a different area of the budget. All budget adjustments and transfers after you approve them by state law go to the commissioners for their approval within 30 days. A quick summary of these items. 6F, this is a non-monetary in-kind budget adjustment to reflect the amount of funding that the county informs us they invested in the SRO program on our behalf. As you all know, the SROs are all employees of Sheriff DeWeese and the actual funding for those costs remains in the sheriff's budget. 6G, this budget adjustment reflects insurance reimbursement for some facilities events we experienced during FY23. You may recall over the freeze during the winter holiday, we had some pipes break in, our four, in four schools that also re resulted in some water damage. These, adjustment relates, these adjustments relates to the, relate to those situations. 6H, this is the annual budget transfer among the major categories. 
During FY23, we experienced savings in some areas due to staffing turnover. In transportation related to buses not always running due to driver staffing shortages and the repurposing of some funds that had been marked for a possible real estate purchase that did not occur. These funds are being applied to other areas due to higher than normal health care uh, expense covering the first year of expanded dual enrollment under the blueprint technology replacement costs which we have often discussed as a budgetary concern and some costs in plant maintenance. This budget adjustment for 6i is to the Food Services Program Fund. It reflects an increase in paid participation likely due to people um, enjoying it during the pandemic, uh, that blanket eligibility that we had, an increase in free and reduced participation linked to increased direct certification numbers for our compensatory education. Questions? Um, are we are we taking those all together no. or do no. we do one no, at six a time? F okay, so we'll I go to the first six, one and then I did, we yes. can ask questions on the yeah. later ones. Yeah. Okay. All right. Comments, questions? Okay. I call for the vote of the approval of the FY 2023 operating budget adjustment. All those in favor, signify by saying aye. 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 Opposed? It passes unanimously. Now I need a motion for the approval of the FY 2023 operating budget adjustment 23-02. So moved. By Dr. Dorsey. I'll second. And seconded by Ms. Battaglia. Seeing no questions, I call for the vote. All those in favor, signify by saying aye. Aye. Opposed? It passes unanimously. Now I need a motion for the approval of the FY 2023 operating budget transfer 23-01. So moved. So moved by Ms. Battaglia and seconded by Mr. Whistler. Ms. Savigny. Um, just a quick question as to um, why the employee medical rose so much this past year. Mm -hmm. We are teasing that out with our actuaries, Bolton Partners. Um, the, the quick, easy answer without the level of depth that really matters is we've had higher claims experience last year than we have had right. in, in the previous five or six years. Okay. So I could offer you anecdotal things. I Carl Streaker. There needs to. <laughs> <laughs> There's Brutal. Two, two people over here now. Um, <laughs> yes, we have Carl Streaker, and then we have one with a bad knee. So it, there we go. It, it, anecdotally, what? Because we've also engaged the employee groups in this conversation. Um, mm -hmm. there, there's some yeah, feeling that one thing that has occurred is people put off some some procedures or things for the pandemic years until they felt like they were on the other side, mm -hmm. and um, and that's the case. But but the truth of the we don't know that for sure, but what Bolton will be able to provide us is some comparative external data as well as internal data, and we can tease this out this summer. Um, they were aware of they were aware of most of the year's experience when our actuaries helped us set rates for next year's budget. So I, I feel okay about next year's budget. Okay, that was yeah. my next question: okay. was yeah. do we feel okay with where we are with next year's budget yeah. given that prior experience? We, we do, and in this in this year's case, we have other areas of the budget where we realize savings, and and that's fine, and and. A good way to go about it we also have a healthy uh, a healthy that's not the right word a, a sound health care reserve fund as well so if we you know if we ever had a call or an experience year like this there is a reserve to handle that in this year's case we don't need to do that okay okay, okay. great thank All you right. sure anything else I will admit I had shoulder surgery and bicep surgery too, so I, I, I will admit it, I'm part of that problem, <laughs> but at least I'm being honest. <laughs> As I told Dr. McCabe, if we can't have a little bit of fun, something's wrong. All right, I call for the vote. All those, <laughs> all those signify by saying aye. Aye. Opposed? It passes unanimously. And at this time I need a motion for the approval of the FY 2023 Food Services Budget Adjustment. So moved. By Dr. Dorsey. I'll second. By Ms. Battaglia. Any comments? Oh, yes, we do. Go ahead, Ms. Savigny. <laughs> Sorry, John. <laughs> um, 
Just a question about the the, the three point six million. So yeah. this is there, there's no impact to you know charges for student lunches or anything like that. It's this is just the amount that is going to be required by the food services to to put back into the program. For recognizing the program fund, we have not increased food or meal prices in many many years. Um, this is a combination of two areas turning out in reality to be higher than than we anticipated, and um, we I think that Dr. McCabe gave what we believe is the explanation. Um, you remember during the pandemic, anyone could get a free meal regardless of, regardless of status, and apparently some families, students like that, and continued at a higher rate to purchase when it returned mm -hmm. to purchase than we had experienced in the years of purchase. And then the, the whole issue that led to the adjustment in compensatory education money under the blueprint formula that we talked about so many times during the budget cycle, um, that's the other portion of it because once a student is counted and, and now the state's using direct certification as opposed to every parent must fill out a form and the, Ms. Sarno gets reimbursed from the federal um, system for, for that participation and so those two things okay. have led to this increase but there's no charge to no charge to no students charge. or parents. Okay, and this is, um, is this just a timing issue, like so that we, we wouldn't have known about this at well, the time? Timing, yes. Um, okay. None of us had a clear, and I believe I'm speaking for most boards of ed, or at least everyone I, I interact with around the state, none of us anticipated what direct certification was going to mean to the funding formula, to the blueprint fiscal compliance issues, and, and this is just a byproduct of that. I'll, I'll admit we did not necessarily anticipate ongoing increased paid participation. Right. So that's a, that's a good thing. That's a good that's thing. A positive right. thing. Mm -hmm. Okay. Great. Thank you. All right. I call for the vote. All those in favor signify by saying aye. 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 Opposed? It passes unanimously. At this time, I need a motion for the approval of temporary construction easement to Stavius Properties and permanent easement to Board of Commissioners for Sanitary Sewer Line on Century High Property. So moved. So moved by Ms. Battaglia, seconded by? I'll second. By Ms. Savigny. This is just a routine temporary construction easement uh, for known work that the county is undertaking. I called for the vote because she didn't have her card up. No, I don't. <laughs> All those in favor <laughs> signify by saying aye. 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 Opposed? It passes unanimously. At this time, I needed a motion for the approval of stormwater management deed for easement for Washington Road sidewalk project. So moved. By Ms. Battaglia, second by Dr. Dorsey. And this item is a stormwater deed for easement for a sidewalk project the county is undertaking on Old Washington Road. I call for the vote. All those in favor signify by saying aye. 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 Opposed? It passes unanimously. At this time, I need an, a motion for the approval of personnel appointments. So moved. By Dr. Dorsey, seconded by Second. Mr. Whistler. Thank you. I have a large number of appointments I'm recommending to you this evening. Mostly, this will conclude the bulk of appointments for the next school year, although there are always may be a few later items or some that result from the domino effect. So <clears throat> we have Alex Fiore, school psychologist, Harford County Public Schools to school psychologist, uh, student services. Melissa Freeman, Special Education Instructional Consultant in Special Education, to Principal Carol Springs. Kristen Lavender, English Teacher in Howard County Public Schools, to Assistant Principal Mount Airy Middle School. Heather Mackey, Special Education Teacher at Gateway, to Pupil Personnel Worker in Student Services. Alyssa Narcross, Mathematics Teacher at East Middle, to Assistant Principal Northwest Middle. Julianne Sawicki, School Counselor, Anne Arundel County Public Schools, to Pupil Personnel Worker in Student Services. Christina Teplick, School Psychologist in Davis School District, Utah, to School Psychologist Student Services. Ashley Warfield, English and Theater Teacher in Washington County Public Schools, to Assistant Principal Francis Scott Key High School. And Lauren Wilder Schaefer, Coordinator of Local Accountability in Curriculum and Instruction, 
to Principal William Winchester Elementary. Um, Mr. Whistler. First of all, I, I hope everyone out there noticed a lot of those incoming people from other counties. And so we noticed it earlier today when we met and um, I, my hat's off to the staff. And it's just a testament that shows that we're a great place to work. Um, so again, great kids, great students, great staff. Um, keep them coming. Come to Carroll County and work. We really appreciate it. Ditto. All right. And Lauren Wilder, Schaefer, uh, you did a wonderful job in your position in accountability. We will miss you, but best of luck because I know you do a great job there. But yes, it, was, it is very nice to see a lot of educators coming into our county. Mm -hmm. So um, thank you very much. I call for the vote. All those in favor, signify by saying aye. Aye. Opposed? It passes unanimously. Now I need a motion for the approval of personnel action items. So moved. By Dr. Dorsey. Seconded by? Second. By Ms. Battaglia. For the personnel action items this evening, there are one new hire, four releases from contract, four broken contracts, one non-renewal, nine increases in FTE, and four decreases in FTE. Comments, questions? The doors are open. We have openings, please come. <laughs> I mean, I cannot advertise that enough. Educators, custodians, cafeteria, IAs, you name it, we have a job for you. There we go. Oh, bus drivers, oh my golly days, I can't forget that. Jeez, UP, how could I forget that? They're my buddies. So yes, we need any, we have a lot of openings, please come to Carroll County. I call for the vote. All those in favor, signify by saying aye. 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 Opposed? It passes unanimously. Now I need a motion for the approval of the 2023-24 pay raises for contingent employment. Mm -hmm. By Ms. Battaglia, seconded by Mr. Whistler. Each year at this time we bring for your approval uh, the pay rates for contingent employees, commonly referred to as substitute rates. For this year, lately, this is more of a recognition of the action you took midway through the fiscal year to increase substitute rates in light of staffing challenges. Some other rates were adjusted to $15 an hour to reflect that Governor Moore and the General Assembly accelerated the phased increase in minimum wage. Comments, questions? Seeing none, I call for the vote. All those in favor signify by saying aye. 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 Opposed? It passes unanimously. At this time, I need a motion for the approval of the ratification of a PSASCO Master Agreement. So moved. By Ms. Battaglia. Seconded by? All seconded. Dr. Dorsey. Although the board will need to act on these two items individually, I will discuss 6O and 6P together. In previous months, the board ratified the other three of our collective bargaining agreements. I am very pleased to share that the memberships of the other two employee groups, CCEA and EPSASCO, have ratified their agreements. We now bring them for your action to ratify. This action is important and I thank the two associations for their collaboration as these are the two employee groups most, that most directly are impacted by the blueprint. It is very positive to be able to ratify these agreements and move into the next year knowing that we have much work to start on with these groups regarding the blueprint. Questions? Comments? Ms. Sabigny. Um, Ms. Herbert, I would like to make a motion um, okay. on the APSASCO agreement. Sure. Okay. Um, there, there I've, I noticed during um, my review that there are multiple grammatical issues um, that I think that we need to fix. Um, I don't want to hold up the approval of this because I think the intent is there and like right. we're, we're, we're pleased with the, the raises and the, <laughs> and the provisions and everything, um, but there are just multiple grammatical issues okay. that I think we need to work through. So if we could just approve it contingent to fixing those. I have a motion on the floor and Mr. Whistler will second it. Are there any other comments? All right, now do I need to vote on this amendment first? All right, any other questions? I call for the motion on the vote to amend, amend 
the Absasco master, master agreement with, um, with just the grammatical with grammatical errors. errors. Yes. Okay. Right. All those in favor, signify by saying aye. 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 Opposed. It passes unanimously. Now I need a vote for the approval of the ratification of the Sasco Master Agreement. CCA. With C all the CCA. CCA. Sorry. Now we're going to do that one next. Sorry. No, no, no. no, no, no. We got to. I've got to go back to no, Sasco. That's okay, Doctor. That's okay. I know. It's been a long day. I know. She got very excited. Very excited. At least I was right this time. But that's okay. <laughs> so anyway, now I need a motion for the approval of the ratification of the Absasco Master Agreement with the amendment. So moved. Yeah. So, so moved? Second it? All right. I'll second. Okay. And I call for the vote. All those in favor signify by saying aye. Aye. Opposed? Passes unanimously. Got her done. All right. Now I need <laughs> the approval of the ratification of the CCEA Master Agreement so by Dr. Dorsey, seconded by second. Mr. Whistler. Okay, now you can go on again. Anything else? She's already talked about this. Any comments? I call for the vote. Let's get it done. All those in favor, signify by saying aye. 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 Opposed? It passes unanimously. Thank you all for working on both of these master agreements. Now we can move forward and we can get plans made and get school rolling in the fall. Yes. So I thank you all very much. I really do the teams that worked really hard for this. Absolutely. Yes. You my my that. comment was it's it's nice that we're giving our staff the raises they deserve. They work so Thank hard. you. <laughs> As they leave. <laughs> All right. Now I need the approval of the MABE FY24 annual dues. So moved. By Dr. Dorsey, seconded by uh, okay. Ms. Battaglia. These are the annual dues, um, your annual dues, to belong to the Maryland Association of Boards of Education. Any questions? We use them, and they do a fantastic mm -hmm. job. And I will tell you, John Williams is Mr. Legislator, and they call him Mr. Ne or Dr. No, but let me tell you something. He does a fantastic job. Best of luck to Francie Glendenning. She is retiring. Uh, she was the executive uh, director for 10 years, ten years. Mm -hmm. so and I, I wrote her a thank you mm -hmm. uh, but um, I they do a wonderful job and we need them any other comments no increase from 23 I know that mm -hmm. <laughs> I call for the vote all those in favor signify by saying aye. aye aye opposed it passes unanimously now I need a motion for the approval to retain legal counsel so moved by Dr. Dorsey, seconded by Ms. Battaglia. As we close each fiscal year, we reconcile all legal services utilized during the fiscal year to the retainer agreement you have with your legal counsel, P.K. Law. All services annual retainer are discounted, and we pay that discounted rate for additional legal fees over retainer. Any comments? Yes, I want to give Ms. Rochelle Eisenberg the stand. Thank you, Ms. Herbert. We go way back. We go way, way back. <laughs> uh, and our firm is privileged to represent you. And as we were noting earlier, I think we go back to law firms 55 years, which is amazing. For myself, it's 46 years, which is also amazing. Just say that fast. <laughs> <laughs> but we enjoy representing you. It's an honor to represent you. Uh, you present uh, challenging cases for us, and you provide us with really qualified staff with whom to work through those challenges. We look forward to another productive year and hopefully fewer cases yeah. for you. Yeah. Mm -hmm. it, mm -hmm. Each year always brings new a new horizon, mm -hmm. but I want to thank you and Ed. Uh, we all go way back, and we appreciate your services. Thank you. Mm -hmm. And I call for the vote. All those in favor, signify by saying aye. Aye. Opposed? It passes unanimously. Um, let's see. Did I miss one, or did I go out of line here? Okay. okay. So now, I. Mm -hmm. 
six F. Okay, now I need the approval. I need a motion for the approval to retain legal counsel. So moved by Dr. Dorsey, seconded by second. Ms. Battaglia. I recommend that the board renew a retainer agreement with PK Law for the coming fiscal year. Rochelle, Ed, and their colleagues provide quality legal services to you and our system with proven success. The proposed agreement has a slight increase in the annual retainer amount, but the overall structure remains the same. Services beyond the retainer will be discounted and council will not charge for their time at board, me board meetings. Thank you. You're welcome. <laughs> and actually, I enjoy coming to board meetings. <laughs> it's like, I have to say this, coming to a board meeting is like looking at a Norman Rockwell painting. Oh, well, thank you. You're welcome. Better start making some popcorn over there. Does she mean the one with the dogs? <laughs> <laughs> she didn't go say that. I don't I'm know. Oh. She leaves it's, a lot to the imagination. It's pure America. <laughs> All right. I call for the vote. All Just those in favor, right. signify by saying aye. 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 Opposed? It passes unanimously. I wanted to be sure. <laughs> now I need a motion for the approval of the educational specification for kindergarten pre Pre-kindergarten Pride Edition. So moved. So moved by Dr. Dorsey. Seconded by second. Ms. Battaglia. As part of the design process for construction projects, we form a committee of stakeholders to determine the educational specifications to which the project will be designed. This item is for the approval of the ed specs for the K-Pre-K Pride Editions. I believe that Dr. Dorsey and Ms. Savigny are the board representatives to the ed specs committee. Any questions or comments? Ms. Savigny. I did just have one question. Oops, you, uh, there you go, there you go. I just have one question about the bathrooms. I know that that was um, a subject of great debate when uh, we were meeting with the group, um, when Dr. Dorsey and I were meeting. So each kindergarten classroom that's being added will now have two bathrooms with it? That's the intent um, from the committee uh, for the new classrooms, the kindergarten classrooms and the pre-K classrooms would both have two. Several, several of the teachers on the committee uh, express their concerns with just you know, the struggles they have with just one throughout the day and, and handling 20 to 22 kids that need to go all at the same time and losing instructional time. So uh, it's in the educational specification that way. Mm -hmm. When we get a designer on board and they have to design to a budget and start to figure that out, it, you know, that there's a process, but right now that's the intent, yeah. Okay. And that was a high priority. Um, it for the really team. was. <laughs> so we're going to try to make that work, if at all possible, right? Um, but it may go by the, the design chopping floor, depending on where, how just, the... Yeah, just like any project, when the architect begins designing, um, sometimes there's compromises depending on the budget that you have. Um, but the committee is part of that process, so as they design, they'll be working with the planning committee. Okay. So, but the intent is, yes, to put two, two bathrooms in each classroom. Okay. I do think it makes a lot of sense. <laughs> Certainly understand the prioritization yeah. of it. Okay. Mr. Whistler? Thank you. Oh, okay. You just had your card up. That's all. Oh, sorry. Okay. No problem. All right. I call for the vote. All those in favor, signify by saying aye. 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 Opposed? It passes unanimously. Okay. Now we are going... I just wanted to okay. add, I really enjoyed being a part of that committee. And um, Bill, you did a great job of, of leading us and facilitating us through all of the discussions. And you guys are just so knowledgeable. I mean, I, of course, I'm impressed when you can just sit in a room and figure out the dimensions without any kind of measuring <laughs> items with you. <laughs> so anyway, it was um, just a great opportunity. And the teachers are really fantastic. I mean, they let you know what they want and what they need. So yeah, mm -hmm. yeah what works for them. And you're right, Dr. Dorsey, about the, the, the folks that were in the room. They, they basically were, look, I realized that they were looking at the ceiling tiles. They're like, okay, that's 10, 10 ceiling tiles. Like, okay, so that means it's, you know, 500 square feet. <laughs> <laughs> okay. <laughs> All right, now we are moving on to discussion items. 7A, board policy, ADD, threats, violent acts, and weapons prohibited. Administrative regulation one of two, threats, violence, acts, firearms, and weapons prohibited. Administration regulation two of two, workplace related threats, violent acts, and weapons prohibited. We have three policy revisions for discussion this evening. They will be presented for discussion and after being submitted for public comment, they will then return for your action at the July meeting. 
In general, these revisions are being brought to ensure compliance with current COMAR. Although some of these policies touch multiple areas, our Director of Student Services, Mr. Streaker, has the lead. I will ask Mr. Streaker to, to very briefly summarize the revisions. All righty. <laughs> Very briefly. I hear that over and over. Got you did it. hear that. Um, I didn't know that was in your vocabulary. It's not. I'll do my best. Um, I have a thought, but I won't say it out loud. I'll tell you later. It's That's good. I know. I have a filter for anybody who doesn't believe it exists. He doesn't want to two broken feet. Um, two broken feet, right? So, um, generalize the, the update for uh, ADD. One is to bring the titles of the policy and regulation in alignment with one another. There's a change to add weapons prohibited to both. Um, and also to indicate that um, Mr. Elliott, as our coordinator of school security throughout, is recognized as, as one of our folks. Um, and then uh, some definition changes, aligning the definitions to all be together. And also um, the other changes are really in, in response to the, some guidance documents that have been produced by the um, Maryland Center for School Safety. We certainly want to keep up to date and um, clean up clean things up and actually recognize the processes that we found to be working very well in Carroll County. I'm proud to say that our group, um, in our meetings throughout the state, uh, we are uh, very ahead of our counterparts when it comes to our processes in place and whatnot. So we're in great shape with this. Our, our partnership with law enforcement is outstanding, um, and we, we certainly appreciate their support whenever situations come to our attention. Um, so I, I'm certainly welcome to take any questions you may have. Um, but that's kind of the meat of the, the brief part of the changes to those policies. Ms. Savigny. Thank you for that, Mr. Streaker. Um, I, when I was looking at this, I was saying, oh, okay, we're, we're seeing this again, right? So the, the, we've seen these a couple of times over, over the last few years. And so these aren't necessarily changes that are because of issues that we've had, but just necessarily just bringing our documentation in alignment with the actual practice. It, absolutely. And I think part of it is this is one of those regulations that we definitely want to stay really on top of with anything that's, that's changing in the environment. Um, when it comes to managing threats, we certainly want to be right there with anything that's new. So it was originally, I think, uh, eight, uh, 1920 was the first year, and we had some slight revisions, and then uh, we're up for our three-year review and just wanted to make sure we were on top of that, as well as the state put out that new guidance. Okay. Great. Thank you. Mm -hmm. I see no comments. Um, on 7A, we'll move to 7B. Board Policy EFE, Comprehensive School Health Program and Wellness Program, Administrative Regulations EFE, Comprehensive School Health Program and Wellness Program. All right. Another brief overview. Um, in the policy, we're, we're really looking at just identifying appropriately the, the work in the counseling, psychological services, and social services. Uh, in the regulation, we have some title change errors, not errors, just updates, um, and also um, recognizing uh, no curriculum changes at all as this doesn't dictate curriculum but recognizing for example the health health one and health two are two separate requirements in alignment with Comar uh, one thing I certainly want to recognize is the work that went into this there's quite a few people from both Carroll County Public Schools and Carroll County Health Department that work um, on the school health council that that um, work with this and it's it's a broad spectrum of CCPS um, while it's called the school health council um, you know, Karen Sarno is an important member of that team through food services, Bill Vandegrift, um, you know, and, and certainly our student <laughs> services folks with uh, Ms. Gomes and uh, Ms. Miles with the health services. But just a, a list and the other <coughs> group that we, um, we certainly incorporate this time, folks from HR as well as uh, Mr. Elliott um, and Mr. Prokop because there's some areas of facilities we've even addressed. So the comprehensive school health policy is just that, very comprehensive. So. Uh, it includes way more than just what happens in the area of school health. Mr. Whistler. Thank you so much. Thank you so much, sir. I, I had two um, questions about this item in particular as it relates to st uh, school psychologists. I saw that um, on one page, psychological assessments will be part of the responsibilities now. Is that something that's required and mandated? It's always mm -hmm. been. That's 
yeah. for students then those are that's part of the generally speaking for students being assessed for an IEP that's psychological assessments are an ongoing practice okay, so we're just recognizing that's what that referred to okay I just absolutely. wanted to make sure right, just recognizing the work that's involved sure it's I wouldn't say it's a change it's a it's an added part of the description that was not included before sure thank you and then the other thing I wanted to ask about was I think I read in here mental health therapists will develop treatment plans um, I just want to make sure that we are very clear in that any treatment plans that we implement are parent approved parent notified all of that anytime our mental health therapists are engaging it's a student family it's um, they are working with the students and working with their families to, we don't do any kind of right. um, treatment or anything like I just that want to make sure we parental. codify where it's really really clear for staff that 100 everything we do is family notification family endorsement and family uh, directed absolutely <coughs> a big Thank part you. of that is services delivered through the uh, individualized education program or IEP those are only done with the consent uh, of the of the parent thank you all right seeing no other uh, then we have 7c board policy J.I. H, student searches and seizures, Administra administrative regulation, JIH, student searches and seizures. All right. I, also, I just want to recognize publicly that I was unable to mention everyone's name who was on the School Health Council, um, but we do certainly appreciate everybody's input. Um, as we move into JIH, uh, honestly, as we reviewed the threats, violent acts, and weapons, uh, we kind of took a deep dive into this as well and recognize some changes in language again to recognize um, both Mr. Pierce and Mr. Elliott's positions uh, as well as just cleaning up some language where we had some inconsistencies of recognizing the Board of Education of Carroll County and that searches and seizures may take place if there's a violation of Maryland law or laws of other states uh, should we be traveling out of state and whatnot so that's primarily what you're seeing throughout the uh, document as far as changes. Ms. Savick, Ms. No, excuse me, Ms. Battaglia. No, no, no. <laughs> All right. So the big question, because it is being coming legal as of July first, mm -hmm. uh, marijuana is it going to be basically the CCPS policy as such as alcohol and cigarettes? You have to be twenty-one. If you're under twenty-one, no, not on school property, not on persons, can't be under the influence. So there's still controlled dangerous substances, in my understanding, as well as they are forbidden by your policy and administrative regulation. So the way these are all articulated is if it's a violation of Maryland law or another law, particularly for traveling, let's say we have a sports team traveling to another state and there's a legal issue there that's different than Maryland. And then anything, the most restrictive and from my experience is anything that's in our board policy and reg. So it's still not appropriate or permitted for students to have drugs, alcohol on, on a person as part of your regulations, as well as it's illegal for them under age. Uh, the only exception to that, uh, as far as on campus, is permissible medical cannabis, which we brought to you two years ago, I believe. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. But that is not something students can carry. Mm -hmm. It's only something that could be administered within the context of uh, a health suite. So, As with any other medication. Correct. That they so have I just to... want to be clear that's the only place that would be different. Perfect. All right. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Streaker. Sure. And um, Ms. Herbert, can yes. I just ask, so is this going to be the standard process where these go out for um, community yep. input for 30 days? Yes. And Absolutely. Yes. And, yes. and they'll come back next month. Yeah, you okay. said that. Yes. Right. Mm -hmm. So I'll see you again next month. Okay. <laughs> All right. Um, moving on. At 1 p.m. Wednesday, July 12th, 2023, we will have a joint meeting with the Board of Education and the Board of County Commissioners in the Reagan Room at the County Office Building, 225 North Center Street, Westminster. And at 5 p.m. on Wednesday, July 12th, 2023, we'll have a board meeting with public participation in the boardroom at 125 North Court Street, Westminster. Now, um, Ms. Eisenberg, we will close this and then I will still then sit here and we will then do the opening statement for the closed. Okay. All right. Right. At this time, um, may I have a motion to dismiss? Ms. So moved, but I wanted oh. to bring just one thing up, and I'm sorry, I didn't say anything. Sooner. No, you did not know. But I just need to ask, when sure. are we going to be looking at the strategic plan? Because we are in need of updating that. 
So I actually had that um, s slated to be on the closed session agenda for next month okay. to look at where we are with our strategic plan and what we know about the blueprint requirements right now so that we can uh, determine how much planning we want to do until we know um, if our blueprint plan has been accepted and if not, what revisions need to be made. So we're kind of in this um, strange period right now between our old strategic plan and fully implementing a blueprint plan, which we haven't done yet. So um, I thought that would be um, uh, something to talk about in uh, admin function next month and closed, okay. and then we'll go from there. Okay, yeah, I was getting a little concerned. Yeah. This one expires, so to speak, right. 2018 <laughs> through 2023. Yes. So thank you for mm -hmm. that. And I'm sorry, Mrs. Oh, Burke. no, 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 that's fine. Okay. That was a good question. Okay. But I will make a motion that we adjourn. Okay, they adjourn. <laughs> and, second. and second by Mr. Whistler. All those in favor signify by saying aye. 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 Opposed? Passes unanimously. Now I read this. As permitted by the Maryland Open Eating Meetings Act, Section 3-305B of the General Provisions Article of the Annotated Code of Maryland and Section 3-103 of General Provisions Articles of the Annotated Code of Maryland to consult with counsel to obtain legal advice and to conduct collective bargaining negotiations or consider matters that relate to negotiations. This is a continuation of our closed session. All those in favor, signify by saying aye. 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 Opposed? It passes unanimously. Thank you. Thank you all very much, and have a good evening. Our student member of the board.